and one. And a pleasant good evening to you and yours, and welcome to the Brevard Sports Network. This is the 7v7 Elite pregame show here. Alan Slaughterzinski, Billy Palmer, and a special guest broadcaster tonight with us here in the booth or outside on what is a beautiful night for football. My man from Sports Radio 1560, Mark Moses. Tonight, gentlemen, what we have here, Billy, we'll start with you, uh, the Melbourne alum. Uh, we know the history. Melbourne, for the first time in program history, has won two in a row against this program over the last two years. A series dominated by Palm Bay 12 years in a row, in fact. The uh, Pirates won this football game. As a Melbourne alum sitting here tonight, knowing what you know about this football team, what do you expect to see here tonight? Alan, this gives me vibes of back to 2007, the last time Melbourne beat Palm Bay at home. A 22-15 to win over Palm Bay. Uh, two physical football teams, athletes all over this football field. Uh, and I'm very interested, interested to see how that Palm Bay defense matches up against that Melbourne offense. Tonight. No doubt about it. Mark, um, I know that you've had conversations with Chad Raymond, David Kintai. Uh, you, you know, you, you've talked to Palm Bay. You've got to know both of these schools a lot this year. Uh, as a guy that broadcasts all sports, talk about what a game like this means to the community because I know they're up for it. Well, I was watching your preview show last night on Facebook, and you do a great job with that. Thank and you. And some, some of the comments were, Oh, you know, this used to be the premier game in Brevard County. Yeah. This used to be the game. I'm excited for tonight from this one standpoint. Palm Bay, they got a football team this year. Yeah, they do. They only got one loss, and it was funny. I was talking to one of their teachers today. Um, they're expecting to win this football game tonight, and yeah. they have some talent on offense to get it done. Yeah, well, that is the one key struggle, Billy, that they've had. They've got the talent on the offensive side of the football. They just can't score any points or have not scored any points since that opening game where they put 41 on Bayside. Zach Emery Foster is probably still going to be limited to tonight. Octavian Osby is still hobbled. How do they go up against a very tough Melbourne defense tonight? Uh, they're going to have to establish the run first because that front seven of Melbourne is, is, is nasty with Logan Bar Barnhill, Markel Ford-Watson. Uh, you know, the matchup for me, uh, can Palm Bay go attack the young freshman corner for Mel, Mel High, J.R. Samuel? Yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't know him. I've coached him in youth football. He is that guy. Uh, but, he's again, he's a ninth grader. He's going to, you know, that that's my game plan if I'm Palm Bay. I'm, I'm attacking that side of the field. Yeah, last year this was a game decided by one point, and I don't expect anything different here tonight as we will stay. I guess we're going to have the national anthem. I'm not sure what's going on here. I think the coin toss is going on. Yes. Um, these are two teams um, right now. Mark, Hunter Turner owns the school. He's the quarterback, owns the school record for Melbourne in passing yards. You, it's, it's no different in the NFL or college, Mark, when you have two teams that are very good defensively with what you can expect to see. What do you want to see here tonight? I, I agree with what you're saying, you know, running the football, establishing early. It's, it's very basic, all right, especially at the high school level. Hey, run the ball, stop the run, win the turnover battle. Make no mistakes tonight. That has got to be the key for both these teams. You look at this series, and now we will stand for the national anthem, so bear with us here. homecoming night.
All right, the national anthem has taken place. All right, that's this game. Last night, uh, Billy Merritt Island with a 45-35 win over Eustace. And I don't know what to make of Merritt Island, Billy. Uh, They trailed by two scores in that game. Twice they came back from a two-score deficit in that game last night. The new Tampa Jesuit quarterback um, threw for over 400 yards in the game. He's starting to become more comfortable with the offense. But if you look at Merritt Island's body of work over the last three weeks, probably the strangest three weeks we have seen from any high school football team in this county this year. When I saw you post their record, I believe they're 3-2 and two or 4-2 and two today. And yeah. I, I, I was yeah. just, just, I guess, not paying that much attention. But, you know, that the heritage shocked me. Yeah. It, it shocked me. Um, and then – Putting it on, you know, I say putting it on O'Galley, but pulling out that, that victory against an undefeated district opponent. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And then you look at what else is going on tonight. Winter Springs and Astronaut, two winless teams there. Uh, hopefully Astronaut picks up their first win. Vieira taking on Bayside tonight. And don't sleep on the 0-5 Hawks. Uh, they got a good shot to win that football game tonight against Bayside. Uh, I think the game that really matters and to a lot of people in this county tonight, aside from this one, is Coco at Seminole. Uh, I'm tired of hearing the schedule is tough. Yes, we get it. That's why you schedule those games. Coco's got to win this football game. I, I agree, Alan. And, and you know, this year the FHSA isn't isn't doesn't care who you play based off their you know their rankings. Right. It, it, it's quite obvious. Right. Um, but you know, for the Tiger program and, and for Coach Schneider and company. It's almost a must-win situation. Mark Coco's not even the top-ranked team in their region, in their district. That belongs to the Palm Bay Pirates at the moment. So a loss to Seminole tonight, and Coco could be looking at some real trouble. Look, I saw Coco play here two weeks ago. They scored 44 points. Uh, They're the real deal. I I don't care what anyone says. They are fantastic. And if you are Melbourne, you got to bounce back. You can't just score three points again on your home field against Palm Bay. As the Bulldogs take the field. All right, the Bulldogs take the field, as does the Palm Bay Pirates. Alan Slaughterzinski, Mark Moses, and Billy Palmer with you here on Brevard Sports Network. Excited to be here with you tonight. Jake Owens, the head football coach, as we get set to wrap up the 7v7 Elite pregame show. Heritage is at Sebastian River. Seabreeze at Satellite Space Coast at Palatka and Port Orange at Port Orange Atlantic at Titusville. And right now, Cocoa Beach as well in the fold tonight. And right now, Billy, for me, it's a tie for Coach of the Year between Ben Waldrop and John Holmes. Coach Waldrop has done an excellent job at Cocoa Beach High School. Three straight shutouts. Um, We all know what kind of program that that Cocoa Beach had kind of fallen to and what Coach Waldrop has done. Yeah. I thought he was great. He coached at Vieira when I played here in Melbourne. He's just been around this county. knows what he's doing, so shout out to him. And John Holmes is silently, quickly turning around that title program. The Melbourne Bulldogs have 478 wins in their program history. A 479th win tonight would mean a three-game winning streak over the Palm Bay Pirates. For the Palm Bay Pirates in this particular series against Melbourne, they have dominated despite losing the last two. If you look over the last what is it uh, in terms of what uh, what what is this series? I had it. Thirty-seven and six. Thirty-seven and six is what this series is, and the last two have been won by the Bulldogs. As we get set to kick off here and wrap up the seven v seven elite pregame show, Alan Slaughterzinski, Mark Moses, and Billy Palmer with you back deep right now for. Palm Bay is going to be number 14. That's Larry Johnson. And number two, or three, is that Osby back there? It's either two or three. I it's think either, it's two. I think it's Young. It's Andrew, Andrew Young. Young Jr. And what a season he's having, both of them uh, having back there. Melbourne did receive a 15-yard penalty on the uh, kickoff because uh, Daniel Manman Harris went ahead and ran with, with the flag all the way through Melbourne running out of the end zone. Okay, all right. So a little uh, bravado to start. What? There's nothing wrong with that. I like it. I like it. If you're willing to take the 15-yard penalty, why not? 
Look, guys, I was looking at my notes. I, I look up. Uh, you said the flag, and then there's an onside kick. I've never seen a start like this before. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to high school football. We're going to kick it again. As uh, Yeah, I mean, something didn't look quite right. Thank God I got you, Billy Palmer. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> He's got his glasses on. Yeah, That's uh, what it is. The, the, the bulldog in me gets a little upset when I watch an opponent do that. So. How we look? We look all right? Well, yeah, we're good. We're okay, good. all right. All right, uh, set to kick off uh, number 84 here. That's Jonathan Walker. He's a senior. Right there on the dead of the Bulldog. And Walker puts toe to leather. And this time. I think that one went through the uprights. Yeah, yeah. Give him three. All right, here we go. The quarterback is Jaden Mobley for the Palm Bay Pirates. And Mobley, the. MCC transfer this year really took this job away from a really good friend of his in Zach Emery Foster who switched out to wide receiver and I tell you what um, he's got to get going tonight coach uh, Allen you know Zach Emery Foster is a pure athlete so I think that switch helps this Palm Bay team offensively and Jada Moby's a gunslinger high IQ high football knowledge guy all right what kind of defense does Melbourne run Billy well, uh, Jeff will line up anywhere between a, he'll, he'll run that 4-3 or he'll run a 3-3-5. I mean, he, he, Jeff plays with it. Yeah. He'll personnel depending on what you're running, but uh, the base is a 3-4. Straight up the gut and right away inside the Bulldogs swallow it up for a gain of just one. Mark, the atmosphere here tonight is electric. It's a capacity right. crowd on hand on this side. Uh, I love it. Friday Night Lights in Brevard County. And especially longtime rivals like this, and, 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 especially the weather we've had all of September. Oh. This is a lot better, guys. I can't remember the last time I sat down in the first quarter and was not dripping with sweat. Our guy's got a, a sweatshirt on, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's perfect weather. Second down and eight for Mobley in the offense. Two wide receivers split far side. Straight up the gut again. And, Billy, we talked before the game. Palm Bay runs the football on first down up the middle. 85% of the time they didn't disappoint. Yeah, Alan, and, and I talked to Panucci before the game. He's made a little bit of a switch. And you're gonna, you are gonna—you haven't seen a cover three run since Todd Wilson left Melbourne High School. Okay. Uh, so Jeff, Jeff's, you know, Melbourne normally historically gives up the short stuff. Come up and make a tackle. Don't get beat deep. He says, if you're going to beat me, you're going to have to beat me over top. You take it all day long. And right now, split wide right here is, I uh, believe that's uh, Harris. Throws out, caught, tackled around the neck. And that is a Palm Bay first down. That was a frozen rope by Mobley to his wide receiver. Good looking play there. Right back to the line of scrimmage. This is an offense run by Jake Owens. Uh, the only thing that I don't like about Jake is he's a Cincinnati Bengal fan. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Alan. No one's perfect. I get it. I get it. First and ten, ball at the 30 of Palm Bay. Mobley with Osby behind him. Turns, gives. Osby trips on the carpet, and down goes Osby. Man. That, how many Bulldogs is that, Six. Billy? Six. That is team football right there. The candidate, a candidate for uh, Defensive Player of the Year, number 32, Logan Barney. He's a special player. Panucci sent me over the starters today, and he listed him as freak. That is that is his position on this defense because uh, he can line up. He'll play outside backer, Allen. He'll play D and he'll play middle linebacker, and you'll see him back at safety at some point. Starters on the defense are Markeel Ford Watson, Landon Malali. I hope I said that. Boudreaux Benford. That's up front. It's sweet. Votava, Davis, and Barnhill in the linebackers. We'll give you the secondary here in a minute. Give up the middle to Osby. Big little, big little hole that goes closed quick. And uh, in that secondary, it's Damian Ivankovic, uh, Samuel, and then you also have Kiveris Cohen and Kendrick Wright. For the Palm Bay offense, the offensive line is Hugger, Howard, Day, Castillo, Smith, um, and then the backfield is Osby and Mobley, your wide receivers, and it could be a whole host of any of them uh, from Daniel Harris, Andrew Young, Emery Foster, Jordan Harris, Benedetto, and Junior Fighter. That was the best run so far by the offense. Let's see what they go with right here. Third and seven in motion. Mobley throws underneath, caught short. They'll just turn him around. Catch made by 
Jordan, but stopped, and that's going to bring up decision time for Jake Owens, and it's fourth and three. Interesting fact, Alan. Every Melbourne win against Palm Bay, there's been a Palm Bay alum on the Melbourne staff. Really? Who we got this year? You got uh, Lyle Neighbor is here, Stephen Hughes. That's Those right, that's right, Stephen Hughes. They're going to try and draw him off. I think we're going to see a punt here on fourth and two. I cannot imagine right now, let's see, one, two, three. There's eight guys in the box, Billy. The way that uh, they're not averaging more than three yards of carry. I know it's only two to go, but I don't think you set Hunter Turner up at the 40. I, I'm not doing that. Right, no. You know, I'm not doing that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I trust my defense. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to punt that ball away. We uh, 8.09 to go here in the first quarter. Mark Moses, Alan Slaughterzinski, and Billy Palmer with you here at Tom McIntyre Stadium. I just can't get over the absolutely beautiful night that this is here for football. Coming up tonight, later on, it's going to be the Slow and Low post game show as we pack up and head out uh, to Slow and Low. And, uh, Mark, I tell you, you've got to know these coaches around the area this year. Talk a little bit about, uh, if you would, uh, well, I'll ask you after this punt okay. here. And this is the right decision. Yeah, guys. Oh, absolutely. It's is. so early in this game. Yeah. That's a okay punt, and it'll go out of bounds. Or actually no. comes back in bounds, sort of. Not bad. That's that's okay. So to be first and ten for Hunter Turner, and this Melbourne Bulldog offense coming out. Mark, you've talked to all the coaches this year. You had a chance to talk to David Kentai. Tell me what struck you about their conversation with Coach Kentai. Well, Kentai, just like every great coach here in Brevard County, look, they want to make sure their student athletes are taught the right way, and, right. and they. They go to class. They become young men. They help out the community moving forward. Maybe some of them go play college football at the next level. But this this is a program here at Melbourne that wants to get back. Just like, you know, our guy here with the West Virginia shirt on. He literally you want to get back to championship-level football. And I know that the coaching staff wants to do that. No doubt about it. And, uh, you know, I tell you, Coach Kintai invited me in to talk to the team before the season. About oh, really? The, yeah, about the pitfalls of social media. We do that from time to time. And, you know, they were really a, a very tent, uh, a, a alert group and, and, and ask questions. And it actually went really, really well with this bunch. Uh, they, uh, needless to say, there was a bunch of, that really could care less, and their social media reflects it. But this wasn't one of them. And a false start so penalty, so we're going to kick it again. False start on Palm Bay, but holding on Melbourne. They're going offsetting, so they're going to replay it down. Thank you, Billy Palmer. Well, do, do you repunt? Yep, you're going to repunt offset, so we're just going to replay fourth down here. I think if Melbourne had the choice, they would have just taken the ball where it was at. But because right. it was offsetting, you, you got to replay the down. So, Mr. Tony, how you doing, sir? Good to see you. Of course, I know when you talk to Coach Kentai, you know, he – uh, for those that don't know, Coach Kentai, of course, attended the University of Miami, played on those championship teams with Snellenberger and uh, Jimmy Johnson, and really talk, talked a lot about the impact those coaches had on his coaching career. What are they trying to do here? Draw them off. I like it. Okay. Well, that's Emory Foster back there as a punter. Yeah. Can play quarterback. Yeah, they can do anything right now, right? All right, he got a little bit better kickoff. Oh, hit, that, hit him in the head. Hit him in the head. Billy, the, the word is Peter, 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 right? Get away from the football. And we got plenty of people yelling <laughs> that up here, don't we? Yeah. Get away. Get he, away. He was in stride running, and it hit him in the head. <laughs> so, Alan, I got a score update from Donnie. Coco All right. Seven, yeah. Seminole zero. Coco with a pick six. Seven nothing, Coco. That's a great start. Um, yeah, that didn't happen uh, against St. Thomas. They did lead against Jones. So I tell you what, that gives the Tigers a little bit of confidence. Donnie Reber Jr. doing a fantastic job for us with his recaps. All right, Hunter Turner. With Wesley Lambert, there's the pitch to Lambert. And, oh. yeah, Daniel Man Man Harris swallowed that up before it even got started. Alan, there was eight guys in the box. Yeah. They, they, they were coming. Um, that that – I'll tell you what, that matchup with Man Man and Cody Black, youth football teammates, both great, great great players, respectively, for their programs. That's going to be a matchup to watch all night. Cody picked up another offer this week, or at least negotiating for another offer. We'll, 
I don't want to, you know, give you the school until the offer is official. But I know he's got some offers out there. And Man Man, of course, being looked at. But anybody. Oh, my. Turner steps up, throws. What a great play in that secondary uh, by Palm Bay. Number 14 for the Pirates. I lost my roster. <laughs> 14 is Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson. Larry Sophomore. Johnson. How many guys you got out here, Billy, from uh, – I, I would have to take a couple minutes to count, but there's plenty of guys from uh, from West Miami. You knew where the question was going. That's what I love. Turner, third and 14 here, looking in trouble. Oh, Gets nice away move. from Harris, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds by Daniel Mann. Or that's actually number six. That's not Man Man. That's Yeah, Karee has had. I tell you what, it would be easier for me to find the guys on this Palm Bay defense that have not had an outstanding season. Going into last week's game, or the game they played before the hurricane, they had scored 10 offensive touchdowns and eight defensively. That That is remarkable, a remarkable number. And we're going to get a three and out for Melbourne. That possession felt like it was 45 seconds in it, length. It did. It and, really did. And was dominated by Daniel Man Man Harris coming off the edge there. That is the one thing that you've got to protect tonight for Hunter Turner. He took a beating against Coco. Uh oh. Oh! Running into the kicker. Yeah. Is it going to be? That ball's going to take a bounce, but this is where the action is right here. Man, man, got the kicker. What's it going to be, coach? Is it going to be a personal foul or is it going to be a five yard? Well, I didn't see him hit the ball. So if he didn't touch the ball. It should be a personal foul. That's 15 yards. That's enough. Yep. Yeah. So they will get it again. You take them for, You take these first downs any way you can get them, gentlemen. You're absolutely right. And look, it's a bang bang play. He's not. The intent is not to injure the punter. He just whiffed on it, hit him in the foot. Had he actually laid out on that, he and probably would have got it. Well, Alan, I mean, a simple coaching point. You, you, you don't want to. Lay up. You want to Superman it. You want to lay out. Lay I got flat. you. you gotta Good lay point. Flat, you got to lay flat across his foot. You lay up, you're going to run into him. You lay flat, the only thing you're going to do is hit his foot. All right, Turner with another opportunity. Lambert up the middle. And the one thing that I'm going to keep my eyes on tonight, guys, and we see this so often at the NFL level, is this. And that is, even if you're not getting yards on the ground, you still have to stay committed to it. Because you've got to keep, you have got to keep the defense honest. And if you if you abandon the run, even at the high school level, they can start teeing off on your quarterback. Allen, both these teams are over eighty percent run on the first down. No matter where the ball is on the field, no matter where they're at in 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 the game, they are eighty percent or above trying to run the football on first down. Palaka is up 7-0 over Space Coast. All right. Turner gives the Lambert. Lambert cuts there back. Lambert with a nice run up the gut. And he's going to have nine yards and still on his feet. And Lambert close to, if not having, a Melbourne Bulldog first down on first down. He'll be short. It'll be second and two for the transfer from Arizona. Billy, you're close to this program. How has Lambert fit in? I'll tell you this much. I talked to Coach Edwards, uh, the strength coach. He's pound for pound the strongest player in this program. He said whatever he was doing in Arizona, whatever he was taught, that young man fits right in. He's a hard worker, grinded out, typical Melbourne running back. All right, third down and one. I thought it was second, my bad. Turner with an up back now. Lambert, Palm Bay shows blitz. They bring blitz. Lambert makes them pay. On. I like that. He ran the opposite side of that blitz or ran to the right of that blitz and was able to pick up the first down. Good heads up running, good vision by Wesley Lambert. Okay, so do you keep it going on the ground with pounding it or do you try to mix it up right now? Uh, I, You know what? On uh, first down out. here, we got a timeout on the field. We apologize for everybody running in front of the camera. But they're coming in. Any, I don't it's, think there's any more room for people coming up here. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think there's any place else for anybody else to sit. But uh, 
anyway, uh, hey, look, you think about it. Three straight plays, like I said, took 45 seconds. You're like, uh-oh, Pompey's going to get the ball back, and then roughing the kicker. So now it looks like Melbourne's got momentum. I don't know much about the special teams for Melbourne. Billy, what's this kicker's range? Safely, 35 and in. Okay, so he's at uh, the... I, I think he can make one further, but it's high school football, Allen, and me and Blue talk about us all the time. Special teams in this county is so inconsistent, yeah. unless your name's Brady Denenberg. Right. That's exactly right. So here we go. Wind, actually, the, the one benefit the one benefit is that the wind is at the back of the uh, players right now. And it's first and ten. Turner, Will Lambert goes in motion, and he's going to hit him quickly. Love the play call. Lambert down the sidelines, out of bounds at the 15. Oh, flag. And a flake flag. This will be first and goal for the Bulldogs. And Lambert's helmet comes off. That do you have to come off uh, if the if the helmet came off on it, a penalty? It, 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 that was ripped off by the by the defender. No, you do not. So that'll be a half the distance penalty, and it'll be first and goal for the Bulldogs. But it looks like Alan, I'm trying to see if we must have a flag at the line of scrimmage. I didn't see Melbourne that one. Back. How could that possibly be a hold? He threw the ball as soon as it was snapped. That I do not understand. I, I don't think it is, uh, unless it was on one of the receivers that was out wide. Yeah, that, that could be. That could be. All right, what's the call? Billy will keep me straight. <laughs> I get a little emotional. <laughs> I know. And when I and when, and when I unfairly criticize the referees, at Roy Holbeck will call me. Holding. So there was holding on, on defense. defense. Declined. There. Okay, I didn't understand. It was holding on Melbourne. I'm sorry, what? holding on Palm Bay, but a face mask, a five-yard face mask on Melbourne okay. offsetting. But I don't. I didn't see. Yeah. Okay. So the bottom line is, uh, we're gonna do all. We're gonna do first down again. Second that, offsetting penalty in the game. Go ahead, Mark. Guys, that is tough if you're Melbourne because that was a big pickup. Yeah, it was. Coming off the timeout. That's offside. So the <laughs> center there. I will tell you this, Alan. I watched Palm Bay play against Heritage. If there's one caveat I would suggest to Coach Owens is the discipline of this, this, this team. Yeah. There's, no. a, there's a lot of, of after play things that hurt this Palm Bay football team. The the, – the, uh, the physicality after the play, the talking, that's, you know, got that's got to – you're right, Billy. You're 100% right. I think that's going to hurt Palm Bay down the, down the line if they, don't, if they don't correct it. Oh, nice play, but Palm Bay was there to swallow it up. Uh, I, you know what? Fooled me, but uh, that's not easy to – I mean, that's not hard to do. It'll be second and four now. Where the ball is going to be at about the 28-yard line, 35. It's a 45-yard field goal right now, so they need at least 10 more yards. Turner from the gun. Play action throws. Caught. Beautiful catch. It's Channing play ball with the catch. I'll tell you what, uh, that was a straight dart out of Turner's hand, and that catch... Uh, by Channing Clayball. That was a difficult one. That's all hands, Billy. Channing, Channing, again, a West Melbourne athlete, great kid, uh, you know, kind of coming in, replacing Thomas Wadsworth, and, and, you know, big shoes to fill for number nine. First and ten at the 20. That's uh, close to offsides, but he gets back. I still don't understand why they allow him to get back sometimes, and sometimes they don't. Right. Well, the rule is you're not allowed to. So Okay. When it's not college football. You, yeah. You, you cross that neutral zone, it's a flag. Well, should have been one there then. Turner throws. Oh. Open. Caught. Oh. Drop. Oh, my, Billy. That was six points and a beautiful pass from Hunter Turner. Safety came flying up. Allen and Jalen Clark got behind him. Just got to gotta get your hands on that one. And, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see Melbourne run Wesley Lambert in motion again. And run that play. Well, they're going to fake it. Fake the, the whatever you want to call it terminology wise to the left side out to the flats you're gonna receive a receiver acting like he's blocking he's gonna slip by that was dropped man pure and simple second down and 10 ball just inside 
the Kendall signs red zone Turner keeps Harris gets him from behind but not before Hunter Turner pushes his way Billy all the way down to about the 15 and it's going to be third and about five and a half to six to go here I I, I just keep watching this Cody Black and man man Harris uh back and forth I mean man man was getting ready to tackle Hunter and Cody Black came out of nowhere and it's, it just knocked these, him these two are just going at it. It, it I mean they know each other very well all right, third down here. Melbourne is definitely controlling the clock this first quarter. Yeah, under a, al almost a minute to go here. Throws. Oh, you know, I hate to say it. That's a tougher catch by far, but that's a ball that's got to be caught too. You... you You've had two opportunities. You're not going to get a lot of those against No, you're not. And you know what? I almost said you've got to take the points here, Billy. You, you can't go for this. You've got to take these points. I, I, Mark, if anybody knows about taking points as a Ravens fan, it's me. Okay? I know. I, I put up with you every Sunday. I know. I know. I like, look, I like being aggressive, even though they didn't capitalize. I like they were taking their chances. This is uh, Trevor Causey on. The ball is going to be marked at the 22. This is a 32-yard field goal attempt. The snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is up, and it is good. Good. And with 58 seconds to go in the first quarter, a good drive there by the Melbourne Bulldogs. And uh, they get on the board 3 to nothing, Billy. What would you like about the drive? Taking the time off the clock. Yep. Keeping Palm Bay's offense off the field. Uh, that's, I mean, Alan, that goes back to Melbourne High School football as long as you can. Uh, you know, Melbourne's okay winning games 3 nothing, 6 nothing, as long as that they can control the ball on offense. Don't turn it over. Don't give up the big play on defense and control the clock. First quarter. Well, I gave the wrong. I gave the score to Palm Bay. My bad. Okay, now that's right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mark, what did you think about last night's uh, Colts and Broncos game? I didn't. I was, uh, <laughs> I was busy watching uh, Orlando Magic preview uh, shows after a while. It was. What did you think? Well, I fell asleep about 13 times and woke up and watched the final. Hey, we've seen more fireworks in this game so far. Well, Russell Wilson looks spectacular in, in uh, uh, that it, offense, doesn't he? It's rough for us Colts fans with uh, no Andrew Luck or Peyton Manning. Yeah. That Don't. ball is dropped. Bobbled out across the good, 20. Good tackle. Nice tackle here. We got about 53 seconds to go, and it's been a while since we've seen this uh, Palm Bay offense, as Coach Palmer has alluded to. Number eight for Melbourne, the freshman Ramir Davis on the tackle. And the ball, Larry Johnson, the sophomore. This is, he, he, a lot of young playmakers on these teams, both these teams. I can't believe I'm going to say this to you guys. I think this is an interesting drive and a big drive for Palm Bay. I agree. Because an, an answer. Have, yeah, an answer and just set the tone of what we want to do. First and 10 at the 20. Mobley whistles. What do we got? We got encroachment on Melbourne. Somebody's lined up offsides or the DB who is trying to draw off the receiver across the football. God, I love broadcasting with you, Billy. <laughs> It's like a hawk. <laughs> I mean, I don't need a white hat. Homecoming night tonight. And the big question in the Melbourne locker room is who's going to win homecoming games? Is it going to be Hunter Turner? we got three football players trying to do it. I'll tell you, last time Melbourne had Palm Bay for homecoming, yeah. it was on Bright House Sports Network, and we got our rear ends kicked 49-6. to six, So That you remember. Jet sweep. Oh, oh my goodness. Out. Is that ball out? Yes. Melbourne's got it. Melbourne Burn. football on the turnover. Logan Barnhill with the recovery. And I'll tell you what, Logan Barnhill with a great job there. What a play by the defense. I 
couldn't tell. I believe that was Ford Watson on the initial tackle. Markeel Ford Watson got in there. And I tell you, that is that is another thing, Billy. You talked about the discipline in this football team, but that is something that has plagued this team all year. Penalties and turnovers. Talked to Jake Owens about it earlier today, and he said, we're not going to win a game like this tonight if we continue to do the things that we've done. This is a team that should theoretically be 5-0. and it is, Alan. I mean, again, I've watched them play. This team is full of playmakers. They just, you got to have this. I don't know what, this always seems to be a conversation with these referees right now, but Todd Wilson used to tell us, got to be disciplined, can't turn the ball over, can't give big up plays, and you got to win special teams. Yep. You win football games. Yep, no doubt. See, this, okay, from Melbourne, you got to punch this in for seven, Absolutely. right? Right here. you got to get them in a 10-0 hole. You have to. Palm Bay has to score 10 points and a half in the last four games. Now, I, of course, I'm just throwing that out there, but you get the point. The offense is struggling. This, You're right, Mark. This would be huge. Turner, first and 10 inside the Uberzati red zone. Turner, swing pass out. Santiago. Santiago gets the ball down to about the 10-yard line. Frankie Santiago, and it'll be second and 10. Melbourne can pick up a first down without scoring a touchdown here. That's always the best-case scenario. You like that because it obviously opens up the offense a little bit more with a shortened field. So it'll be second and four for Turner and the Bulldogs. So Vieira's up 7 nothing over Bayside. I'm not, I'm not shocked. Coco and Seminole tied to 7. I'm not shocked, and I wouldn't be surprised if Vieira won that football game tonight. Second and four, Turner gives the Lambert. Lambert with a nice move. That's that swarming Palm Bay defense. They got, they got speed. They are fast, aren't they? Allen, I, I, I will tell you this. When, when Melbourne goes trips, the post is wide open in the middle of the field because those backers are so tight to the line of scrimmage. The question is, 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 does Hunter see it? Do they have time? That'll take us to the end of the first quarter. With your score, the Melbourne Bulldogs three, the Palm Bay Pirates nothing. Back with the second quarter and just a minute. When you pair delicious food with great people, everyone has a good time. At Slow and Low Barbecue, we always have something fun going on. From happy hour to kids' night, there's something for everyone. Come indulge in our tasty barbecue, like our mouth-watering ribs and fresh seafood, or sip on one of our specialty cocktails, or a cold beer from our full bar. At Slow and Low, we guarantee you'll have a memorable time and leave with a full belly. Slow and Low Barbecue, two great locations in Vieira and Cocoa Beach. One. All right, welcome back to Tom McIntyre Stadium where the Melbourne Bulldogs are threatening to score here. Start of quarter number two, third and five. Mark Moses, Alan Slaughterzinski, and Billy Palmer with you. As Hunter Turner with Wesley Lambert in the backfield, two wide receivers split to the near side. Man in motion. Give is the Lambert wide open and in for a Bulldog touchdown is Wesley Lambert. Shocking, guys. Nobody on that side for the Palm Bay defense. Allen Melbourne got away with a hold, but I'm sure the Bulldog faithful will take it. Right. But great play call by Coach Hughes. All right, you go, Mark. You said they needed seven. They There's needed six of them. That was huge, especially coming out of the timeout. You come out, you, you run it, and... There's just the on defense for Palm Bay. They look like they can't believe Melbourne's doing this to them right now. Right, right. 11:54 to go in the half, and it's nine nothing. The snap, the hold, the kick, pop through, and with 11:54 to go, it is ten nothing Melbourne. So points off turnovers, gentlemen. I call it pot points off turnovers. So. How crucial it is in a game that was expected to be a defensive battle and the Bulldogs strike first. Day Day Farmer goes for 85, Coco up 14-8. That's exactly what the Tigers needed to do, guys. They needed 
to go step for step with Seminole, the 11th ranked team in the state of Florida. Think about this. Okay, so far in this game, we're up 10 nothing. if you're, you're Melbourne. You're two plays. Running into the punter on fourth down, gave them 15 yards and a first down. They went down the field with momentum, got the field goal. They come back, turnover, get the ball in the red zone, and they capitalize, go up 10 nothing. It's not even the offense. It's special teams and defense. Special teams and defense that's cost them tonight, no doubt about it, as we get set for the kickoff here. Man, we are jam-packed, guys. Yeah, jam-packed. We, I can't put anybody else in. There's the kick. It's a little poocher caught. And so Palm Bay, Mark, if you said before, and there's a flag that flies, I'm not sure who that's going to be on, but that's that's going to be an, an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on somebody from either Palm Bay or Melbourne, and we're about to see who. The refs have been very active tonight yeah. to start this game. Big time rivalry here. I, I think Alan, you know, just as someone that's played and coached in this game, well, like we saw in Merritt Island O'Gal, you kinda gotta let some of this stuff go because you gotta yeah. understand what you gotta understand the magnitude of where you're at tonight. Right. It's like Coco and Rockledge, right? Same thing. This used to be the biggest game in the county until that barbecue bowl. I can tell you in 2007, before that lake was around on the side over here, there was standing room only in this stadium. Really? And that's going to go against oh. Palm Bay. It's Palm Bay. Again, another penalty on a discipline issue, and that's going to back them up. Billy, since you said you played in this game, like you, you went to this school, what does this rivalry mean to you as a former player then? Well, you know, unfortunately, I was at Melbourne. I shouldn't say unfortunately. I was at Melbourne, and, you know, we struggled to win these games. Um we won it my junior year. I was, you know, part of a team that beat Palm Bay, you know. Uh, but it was, it was it was crazy. I mean, we had fireworks before the games. And it just every single year you played Palm Bay, you knew what you were getting to, and you knew that everybody in the county was coming out to this, these type of games. I like he goes, Alan, he goes right with junior year we won. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's awesome. Turns, gives, that's uh, Octavian Ooh. Osby, throws a shoulder. Nice run. That was a good run and a good finish, too. Send a message. Osby does. Yeah, my senior year, I think we fell to him 13 to nothing in a tight game. And uh, sophomore year, I, I can't really recall, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I coached in a game. I find that hard to believe, In Bill. 2010, we had him on the ropes. We're winning. Palm Bay has the ball on their own eight-yard line. We think they're punting. They run a fake punt with three minutes left and go 96 yards. Nico Portis over the top. Oh, man. Wow. First and ten for Mobley in the offense. Looked like an early start. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. Holy smokes off the edge. Number 44 for the Melbourne Bulldogs. That's sweet. Woody sweet. What a sweet. What he just... I, it was shot out of a cannon. We were talking earlier, you know, on the punt. Go for the Superman dive. That's what that looked like on the tackle. Very tight-knit group of this Melbourne, this program is right now. That's a good thing. It reminds me of the Todd Wilson days, and you know. It is third or second and 11 following the loss of a yard here. Mobley takes a peek over. O'Galley up 6-0. to zero. Over Flagler, Palm Coast tonight, looking to bounce back. Man in motion is Young. Mobley rolls, looks, nothing. in trouble, nothing. Nothing. That's, that's a sack. That's Boudreau Binford. Binford's going to get the sack because he chased the quarterback out behind the line of scrimmage. So Boudreau Binford with the sack. And right now, Billy, it's the Melbourne offense outplaying, or the Melbourne defense outplaying the Palm Bay defense, which is huge right now. I told you my question mark in this game was how Palm Bay's offense could play against Melbourne's defense. We know that stingy with Coach, uh, Jeff Panucci's defense is stingy. You're not going to give up a lot. Uh, and, and, and Palm Bay has struggled early this year. But like you and I have said, they have the guys to correct it, yep. everything. For a $25 gift certificate coming up at the seven-minute mark tonight, somebody has put together Mr. Palmer some trivia tonight we're going to play some martin trivia cagney. martin cagney he is uh the historian here and we're going to ask one of those what? trivia questions for a 25 dollars gift certificate 
to Slow and Low Barbecue. Octavian Osby dances in the backfield. What's the call here? Offsides on Melbourne. And that's going to make it third and about 11 now. 10.50 to go and quarter. That's a D lineman just lined up in the neutral zone. I could tell by the way the defense line coach Ron Lugo is uh, letting them have it. Well, you know the D line, they're chomping at their bits. It's like third and long, let's tee off. They can't wait for this play to happen. Beautiful full moon tonight, or at least three, three and three quarters moon, whatever you call that thing. Third and 11 now. Big play for Mobley and this offense. Doubles, meaning two wide receivers split to each side. Osby in the backfield. Man in motion. O- Mobley throws. Hits that guy that was in motion. Turns the corner. But a textbook tackle on the far side by, uh, I can't see the number, but I think it's number 30, Damian I- Ivankovic. Ivankovic. Yep. Ivankovic. If you're a Pirates fan, I know you're frustrated right now, but that is the smart play on third down. Yeah, it's, it is. All, it's only 10 nothing. We're in the second quarter. There's plenty of time. Don't hit the panic button yet. Unless you give up points on this next possession. No, I still think we see a, a, a fake punt here at some point with Emory Foster back there. Yeah, he, he's a playmaker and has been very, very limited uh, because of injury, and he's getting healthier. He's still not 100% yet, but uh, – they need something offensively. Fourth and seven. And he just puts one out there. That ball is at the 40. Takes down to about the 37. And Hunter Turner and the Melbourne Bulldogs will start first and 10 at their own 37-yard line. Man, Mr. Cagney does a terrific job with that record book. Anything I ever want to know about the Melbourne Bulldogs I, well, first thing I do is text you. He handed it to me. And asked me <laughs> he, he, he asked me and Jeff Panucci if we would keep it up. And uh, I think about four months went by, and he goes, I'll take it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this part of the broadcast tonight brought to you by the Mark Moses Show. Coming to you every day, Sports Radio 1560 The Fan and Mark FM as well. Yeah, we're on 107.9 FM as well in Melbourne. I'm working on it. We're going to be all throughout Brevard County very soon. All right, Turner roll. Oh, oh he goes down. Hunter Turner goes down on a sack by Emmanuel Small. Good play by Emmanuel there. And that will bring up second and about 17. Small, a sophomore for the Pirates. And Turner and this offense right back to the line of scrimmage. He's got doubles with Lambert to his left. Turner backs up. Maybe an audible here. We'll see. Breast Cancer Awareness Month, all month long. Brevard Sports Network has changed our logo to reflect our commitment to breast cancer awareness and research. Turner rolls. He, oh, oh, wow. He fell. He fell. I tell you what, that was probably a good thing that he slipped down there because there were six, seven Palm Bay Pirates coming in, and Hunter did not stand a chance on that one. It's going to bring up third and a trip back to Palm Bay for a first down. Getting rid of some of those spam leaks. I appreciate feet. you, Billy. Yeah. Appreciate that. And I'm sure there's a lot of them in a game like this. So that's going to be third. And now the, the thing you don't want to do here is do anything that's going to cause a turnover. And I think Melbourne's going to talk yes. about it, Stephen Hughes, and I think that's a wise decision. So, Mark, tell us a little bit more about the show. It, it features a lot of great guests. Yep. A good-looking guy hosts the show. His name's Mark. That's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> no, Alan comes on my show every Tuesday, break down the latest with, with high school athletics. You do a great job, everyone here with Brevard Sports Network. And, you know, especially this is the the best time of year. Oh, you know, com- compared to the dog days of summer, June, July. You think about right now, high school, college football, NFL. You know, Orlando City's going to try to go for the playoffs. NBA, NHL, your uh, sports. I know, right? Major League baseball. baseball playoffs today. I watched two really good baseball games. The Guardians, and I can't, rem- I can't even believe I said that correctly. Yeah, you did. Uh, and it was the shortest thing about this. Guardians defeated... Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays team right in our backyard took two hours and 17 minutes. Yeah. The, the, the shortest playoff game since 99. Wow. I watched the uh, Phillies in the coach's office before the game. I was watching the Phillies. Yeah. That Cardinals. was two to nothing Cardinals. That game was over. Oh, I like the play call here. Now can he get some yards? And there they we go. Do. Down the sidelines. 
and he has got a first down. Great run, yeah, they're great call. They're gonna mark him about three yards short. Oh, out. what a run. Again, I was just gonna say, coming off the timeout, they are ready to play. Who is that, Billy? That's Frankie Santiago. On okay, because my roster starts at three. Frankie Santiago with the catch and run, and now it's fourth down. Now you keep them out there, Billy, and try to do the draw off thing. Not bad, because as we've seen, undisciplined play sometimes for the Pirates. I don't know I'd be wasting all my time doing this. I may be trying to draw them off right here. Again, Alan, I think this goes into controlling the clock from Melbourne and let it yeah. run down. Yeah. Actually, it went out of bounds, so they're not even doing it. Yeah, that. it's 8-21, I was going to say. Timeout, and they're going to take a yeah. time. And, I, and that's their second. Go ahead, Mark. I, I do, this would be me. I Look, 10-0 lead. You've played really well in this game. You're you're not even at the 50-yard line. I, I'm punting this ball. Absolutely. I, don't, I, yeah. I just play field position till halftime now. I wouldn't have even – yeah, I, I would have – Taking my punt team out there and let's just play ball. Let's just you go. Know. Yep. You don't know. I mean, obviously that's a first half timeout. You get three more in the second half, but yeah, you don't. Yeah, you know, I think they got one more left. Palm Bay's got two timeouts left. As that, and I have not seen the punting team going to the huddle yet. No, I haven't either. Mm -mm. Now you may see Hunter Turner with a quick punt. Billy, what would you say to that play call to Wesley Lambert on the other side? On the, on the touchdown run? No, I mean on the swing pass right here on fourth down right, and maybe you catch. Sent, you sent him in motion, acting like you're throwing the running back uh, yeah. out into a swing pass, and you got that your 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 either your second or third receiver here right down the seam. They might go that, for that this. Gonna go. And they are going to go for it. Turn. Oh wow, that's Daniel Man Man Harris. And uh, no, check that. That is not Man Man. That is Karee coming got a off. Flag the, on the play, Allen. All right, let's see what it is. Uh, they were attempting to run the screenplay that they just ran earlier. Yep. What is this going to be? I don't know, but Hunter Turner's helmet's off. This could be. This is a big call right now. It is because it's either going to be Palm Bay ball or Melbourne first down, one or the other. And it's going to be against Palm Bay. As I, <laughs> I saw. There was nobody from Melbourne over here. Yeah. So that was a pretty far thrown flag. Chase Alexander pointing towards Palm Bay. Let's see what the call is from the White Hat. Personal foul, face mask against Man. Palm Bay. That's 15 yards and a killer, an absolute killer, Mark. That is, you're absolutely right, guys, because I, I don't know why Melbourne went for that on fourth down, and it just bots play, and they just get bailed out again. They give it to him, and now it's across midfield. And right now, the, they're yelling at the officials. All right. This is what we got going on out here. They got to be careful. They're going to pick up 15 more. And for me, Alan, I'm sitting here watching the Pirates dance and clap. Uh, yeah, and, you can't. For what? No. You just got a 15-yard penalty and gave, and gave the other team the football. You know what I mean? And there's 15 Another. more. Yeah, 15 more. And there's, I mean, there's still, there's still. I mean, you got to be disciplined. This is a very good Palm Bay football team that can make a run, and these are things that get you knocked out of playoffs. Right now in 2S Region Three. The team that's ranked highest in Brevard County isn't Coco, it's Palm Bay. Hey. That was 30 yards. A 30-yard uh, penalty. First and 10 at the 35. Give to Lambert. Lambert with a great run. Nice vision. Kept his shoulders square. Ball tucked. Knees high. Textbook stuff there. Textbook stuff. Second and short coming up for Melbourne. I take a shot right here. Turner, Lambert again, and this time it's Karee. And Karee seems to be the guy right now that's really fired up and making plays on this Palm Bay defense. But, Billy, man, I, I tell you, I... I I feel bad for the Pirates fans here that, you know, 30 yards in penalties. Not good. And that's just on this Damn. drive. Lambert in motion. Turner. Right down the middle. Throws. Got him. Touchdown, Melbourne Bulldogs. Jalen Clark. Jalen Clark on a dart from Hunter Turner. 
and the Bulldogs capitalize with 7.09 to go in a half. It's 16-0. That's one of the most beautiful balls I've seen all season so far. Yeah. That was great. And look, I know it's the second quarter. It could be a knockout punch type play. What well, Billy wasn't even his primary. Lambert he, was. He, he, he was looking in, yes. I'll tell you this, and this is no knock on anybody, and it's not because I'm a Melbourne guy. Hunter Turner throws the best deep ball in the county. Yeah, he does. On for the extra point. And that kick is up, and it is good. And with 7.09 to go in the first half, I tell you what, the Palm Bay Pirates haven't scored 17 points uh, on the offensive side of the football since they scored 41 against Bayside. But they're going to have to tonight. And with 7.09 to go in the half, it is 17 to nothing. Melbourne. Billy, are you shocked by this? I, I, well, I told you before it was going to be a very close game. I thought it was going to be low scoring. Um, I, I'm not I'm not going to say take anything away from Melbourne, but Palm Bay's beating themselves with penalties. They are. I, they're giving Melbourne points. They're extending Melbourne's drives. Um, and, and, you know, Hunter, you know, it was far and few between to find a quarterback that beat Mel High or beat Palm Bay as it is, but Hunter Turner might be a, a three-win guy if he keeps up the way he's playing right now. Yeah. And the Bulldogs will kick off here from the 40 because there was a five-yard penalty, Billy, on the 30-yard penalty there. Yeah. And like I said, the 15-yarder the, the – face mask penalty but then the other penalty was just unsportsmanlike on Palm Bay for jumping around right. for no reason. And now what we got this? whistles in the flag illegal procedure. Melbourne's been off sides on three three kickoffs. <laughs> yeah I'm sure they're not going to be happy about that. Special teams coach for the Bulldogs He's is Lyle. Stuart Brown. No, Stuart is the Palm Bay's Lyle Neighbor. Oh I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm looking at the wrong side of the sheet. Who is it Lyle? Lyle, Lyle neighbor. neighbor yeah. Stuart wouldn't be happy. Tell you what, his brother's doing a heck of a job with the defense. Oh, yeah. He's up there as a uh, candidate for coordinator of the year for sure. Back deep for Palm Bay is number 14, Larry Johnson. And that's just a little soft onside kick and wisely. Why? Well, why not? <laughs> You're I, up 17. They can't move the football at all. I'll tell you this, Mark. Melbourne has struggled in some points this year and a lot last year with, with covering the deep kick. If it's not in the end zone, they've given up a couple kick returns or long ones. Uh, so, historically, we have pooched the ball. Um Literally. I don't know why we onside that one. but you I know. That I don't get. I mean, look, if you're Palm Bay, all right. You've not played well. You're down 17 nothing. Hey, you're in Melbourne. This is your best field position so far here in the first half. Yeah. Go capitalize it on it. And it only takes one play, right? Yeah. All right, Mobley. There's Zach Emery Foster in the slot. Keep your eye on him and Osby as well. Uh, these two guys have been banged up for the last month. They need to make a difference if they can. It's going to be two wide receivers to each side. We call it doubles. Mosby, uh, Mobley turns and hands to Osby. Straight up the middle right in your living room. He'll pick up four. And I like the fact that even down 17 to nothing, they've yeah. not abandoned the run. Yeah, stick to your game plan. Go to your bread and butter. Billy, you said it pregame. Hey, both teams, first down, they like to run the football. Eight, over 85% over of the time. <laughs> yeah, not much deviation from that. I got a huddle graphic earlier. I, I, I took a picture of... Uh, and, and, you know, Huddle breaks all these teams' stats down now. And it's right. Just, it's crazy. Second and seven. Again, it's Osby up the middle. And he will pick up another three. Three times. Close. Four is 12, Billy, so I, I like it. Third and four. Keep it. Look, four down territory. Just keep it going. You can't get off the field. Coming up tonight, it'll be the slow and low post-game show here on Brevard Sports Network. And if you got an update on Titusville, any of our uh, viewers. Yeah. I'll see if we can get one. I know Platka's up 26 to nothing over Space Goes. There goes Osby, dragged down from behind by Benford. 
Benford, I'll tell you what, he got in there like a uh, shot out of a cannon. And that's going to bring up fourth down. And I, I don't think Palm Bay has any choice but to go yeah. for this. And, Alan, Melbourne lost Gavin Rowe, arguably yeah. one of the best defense linemen that's come through. Tusculum. But you just got Nate Jennings, Markel Ford Watson, and Boudreaux Benford the right there yep. placing them. Yeah. And that's the thing that Coach Panuch talked about last year with me was what he had coming back this year. Losing the reigning Brevard Sports Network defensive Player of the year in Gavin Rao. Fourth and four. Gavin at Tusculum. Mobley. Got him. Oh, he moved. He flinched. Yep, Palm Bay flinched. And that's going to be a false start. Now it's going to be fourth and nine. And now, now you have to punt. It's actually on the center, Allen. I mean. Yeah. A false snap. <laughs> if, if you're little guy here clapping in front. He likes it. Dad coached at Mel High. Mom's the principal at Palm Bay. So. Yeah. Uh, that's got to be an interesting household tonight. I got to figure out why they got Miss Mila in red and black over here. <laughs> <laughs> Fourth and ten now. Are we punting? Yeah. Uh, Zach Emery Foster is on the punt. Four thirty. The clock continues to run here, and I'm not sure what the deal is. We got to delay a game on Palm Bay. Yeah, I'm not shocked by that. <laughs> I mean, the clock just kept running. Out. I'm not keeping up with the penalty yards, but it's yeah, not either. But it's a lot. <laughs> There's a look at that this district here with Melbourne, Harmony, Heritage, and Vieira. And then, of course, I'll show you Palm Bay's region coming up there in 2S with Space Coast, Astronaut, and Coco. Fourth and 15. Nice kick. Nice punt. That ball will. Take the Melbourne bounce. All right, here is, on your screen at the top right now, is 3S District 10, Region 3. It's Astronaut, Palm Bay, Titusville, uh, Space Coast, and Coco. And I tell you what, guys, um, this is, <laughs> boy, does the Palm Bay, Palm Bay and Titusville game, should this result hold up, really going to mean something coming up in a couple of weeks. Because this region is going to send two playoff teams. One of them is going to be Coco. Palm Bay and Titusville are both not going to go. So that game between those two could be for that second playoff spot. Alan, I think, you know, Titusville is just, coach, like you said earlier, Coach Holmes is coach of the year candidate for what he's done so quickly there at Titusville High School. And you know they have the athletes. Turner throws a screen pass out to the right side. That's Jalen Clark. Clark down the seam there, Billy, and that's just there's another, another flag. flag, and that's on Paul Bay. That's going to be 15 more, Billy. That is the fourth, counting the roughing the punter. That is the fourth if it holds. Fourth just a sideline warning on Paul Bay, so okay. there won't actually be any any. Uh, I was going to say that would be the fourth. Astronaut up 14 nothing over Winter Springs. And there's a flag. There's another one that flies. And they're going and then they're going to call this one. This is on a coach over there. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I I'm just like speechless I, I, I'm, by I'm this. Not, I, I don't want to criticize and I, and we never do on these broadcasts. We give our opinions and we and we try not to criticize, but you just can't keep shooting yourself in the foot like this. Look, it was 17 nothing. Uh, kind of an onside kick. Palm Bay gets the ball at what? The Melbourne 45-yard line? Yeah. Then they go back 20 yards. Yeah. Then they punt it and just more penalties. They have better, and this is going to be 15 more yards. This is an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the sideline. Yeah, there it is. And one more on whoever it is, they're done. Yeah, well, I was a coach. 
I don't know which uh, coach. If it's a coach, it all falls on the head coach. Yeah, no, I agree. No, if, you, if one of your assistants gets a 15-yarder, the next one. Right, that's exactly right. So now it's first and 10, and we'll hit the water break. We'll step aside. Melbourne, all Bulldogs, 17-0. Two, one. All right, welcome back here. And Mark, you had a pretty good point. I mean, you think about this. All right, both teams did not play last Friday night. Melbourne, their last home game two Fridays ago, they had Coco at home. They scored three points. Right. Three points. They got humbled in that football game. Right. They look motivated tonight. Yeah, no doubt. First and ten at the Palm Bay 40. Turner takes snap, hands off Lamber right behind <laughs> Palm Bay's defense is all over. I got to repeat that comment. Not right. shooting themselves in the foot. Dave Blooming. Now what? There's another one. Now it looks. This, this could get ugly. That's on Palm Bay. Not, not could get ugly. This is ugly. And people are going to start getting thrown out. Number and, 19. And Palm I Bay. think, yeah, number 19. That's uh, A.J. Forehand. And I think Forehand's done. There's two flags on the field, Alan. Just dead ball. Yeah. And this will. This is out of control. Out of control. That's back-to-back -back possessions where this has happened. Yeah. yeah. Now they're working on the other and, foot. And I, I didn't see the ejection sign by the referee, so I don't. Maybe he was sent for the. You know, yeah, just sent off. Second and short for the Bulldogs. You know, I think. And Palm Bay's daring Melbourne to throw, and now they're off sides again. I tell you what, I know halftime's not going to be pretty with Jake Owens. I know Jake Owens is a coach. Jake is a good coach. He's a great coach. He's done some really great things. This is a team not indicative of being coached by Jake Owens. He will fix this, and I wouldn't want to be the players um, come Monday. Paul Bay's going to bring pressure right down the middle. Ah, and they got him that time. Him. Ball's out, too. Who's got it? Let's see here. I think Melbourne has come up with it. Hunter's got to get rid of that ball earlier. Yeah, yeah, that one. And that's what the side. That's what he, 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 that's he what did he, have the seam in the middle of the yeah, field. Yeah, didn't have time. Stephen Hughes is telling him that right now. Get ready to the football. You can see Hughes telling him. So it's going to be uh, second down and 16 following the sack. 250 to play in the half. See, guys, those are the types of play, if you're Palm Bay on defense, you have the athletes to make a big play and force a turnover. You just got to get your head back in the game. And and Palm Bay is telling Melbourne, throw the football because yeah. we're stacking the box, and yeah. you don't have time to throw it. Yeah, no, you're right. Tonight, collectively, we've had really one beautiful play, or two, and that was the pass to Lambert and the pass. Oh, my goodness gracious. Number 10, Emmanuel Small came in and absolutely destroyed the play. Third down and 16. That's right. I forgot about the trivia here. I'm all caught up in these penalties. <laughs> thank, so many, thank you, Mark. That's the trivia question. How many penalties have we How had? How many so penalties hard? have we had tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. All right, this is a big play for Palm Bay's defense now. One forty-five to go. Oh, little screen pass. That's Lambert down the sidelines, and he'll be stopped. All right, let's pull the trivia questions out here for a twenty-five hour gift certificate to Slow and Low Barbecue. Billy picked the question. 
I'll read it. You <laughs> pick it. Just Billy's pick, face. That was great. Pick the question. He knows. He wasn't ready. Oh, I, I mean, <laughs> well, we'll, go, we'll go 2007, the last Melbourne home victory here. All right, go ahead, Billy. Right, what, in, what is the question? In 2007, under the first year of Todd Wilson's tenure as head coach, the Bulldogs, Melbourne – Defeated Palm Bay in the regular season 22-15. to Name the Bulldogs running back who rushed for over 100 yards and two touchdowns. All right, there's your question. The Bulldog running back that rushed for over 100 yards and two touchdowns in that 2007 win over Palm Bay for a $25 gift certificate to slow and low. And if you're so inclined, if you get the answer right, the first one to comment correctly, you know what it is, right? Of course. All right. Uh, what team did Anthony Knockreiner I play was on? Knockreiner you know, was on that team? I was just yeah. thinking that. He My guy Anthony. He was a senior. Yeah. If we ask Anthony, he had seven touchdowns in that game. Yeah, Al Bundy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Knock. You know, we had a coach for about three months named, uh, I don't even know, something deal. And and Knock went from playing nose guard to playing fullback. And I'll tell you what, Knock thought he was Mike Allstott. <laughs> <laughs> Fourth, and there's a good story you can tell about. Tell Knock the hey, next hey, time he comes Mike on. Mike Allstott. Hey, and, and, and one of our teammates is sitting right in front of me laughing because he knows it's true. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Fourth down and 11. Joey Hamilton with the correct answer. What is it? Cortez Ray. Yeah. All right, Cortez Ray. Joey, you can meet us up at Slow and Low tonight or simply message Brevard Sports Network with your address and we'll get that gift certificate in the mail to you Monday morning. Congratulations. Yeah. That didn't Joe. take long either. No, it sure didn't. And we'll ask the another one. We'll give another gift certificate away. I actually apologize. I did not see Mike Moffitt. Mike Moffitt was the first one. But. Well, Mike's not eligible because he's a sponsor here. So, right, sorry, so. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for your help. But, Mike, come on up. I'll buy you dinner anyway. There, there, there was a lot of uh, comments coming through there, and I did see Mike's first. All right, all right. 33 seconds to go in the half here. And, uh, 2017, Corey, 2007. T.J. Clark was the running back in 2004. Uh, 2007 was Cortez Ray. Live from Tom McIntyre Stadium here. 17 nothing Bulldogs up as we get set to approach the half here. We going for the field goal now? Yeah, why not? I mean, into the wind, though. Oof. Well, I mean, it's uh, marked at the third. It's a 42-yard attempt here. Uh, a little bit outside his predicted range for me, but who am I? Pretty good coach. Snap, hold, kick. That's a butte, man. Does he have enough? Yeah. Air. That's no good. Oh. No good. It good try. Close. Yeah, it was good. But that actually works out like a punt. So. Yeah. No, you're right. It does. Atlantic is up 7 to 0 over Titusville. Really? This portion of the broadcast will be brought to you by Best Private Investigations. We thank Best Private Investigations. Here's hoping you never need to call one, but if you do, give Best PI a call. You know, guys, uh, this place right here, Tom McIntyre Stadium, I just love coming here. I love the set. I was excited. To, I mean, I've been pumped up about this all week long. I love the angle of the bleachers. I think it gives you a great view for broadcasting. Um, and look, win, lose, or draw. This program, this booster club, Brett Black does a terrific job with uh, the uh, Melbourne Bulldogs booster club. Uh, I, 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 I love everything about coming here. I really do. It's exciting they're competitive again. Uh, you know what I mean? And they're, yeah. you know, making playoff appearances. As Mobley, nice throw down the sidelines and out of bounds at the 49. That's Zach Emery Foster, and that's exactly what Emery Foster brings this offense. That's what they have been missing, a playmaking ability. Good to see Zach get a catch. That'll bring up first and 10 at the 49. 19 seconds to go, though, so they're going to have to – Coming up at halftime, absolutely nothing. <laughs> well, hey, that's a big stop by the defense. Yeah, well, we're gonna, what, what, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the headsets, let you listen to the band yeah. and the homecoming as well. So you'll be able to hear all of that, that. Melbourne's got to get out of this half, not giving up any points here. Mobley he's in trouble, and he's going down. Huge play. Guess who? Wyatt Batavo, the young sophomore. 
And that should take us to the end of the half, and it will with our score. Gentlemen, before we unplug here as they get set to get everything ready for the halftime uh, ceremony, one second on the clock. Are we going to let it run off? What are we going to do here? Just nope, they're going to let it run. Time. Yeah. All right, uh, Billy, your thoughts on the first half? I thought the game was everything we thought it would be, minus the penalties from Palm Bay. I mean, it, I thought it would be a close football game. There's two touchdown drives that Palm Bay hurt themselves. As this guy, you know, they said they shot themselves in the foot, and it, you know, hey, those things can cost you football games. Mark, your thoughts? Melbourne's been fantastic. They have capitalized on, like you said, the mistakes of Palm Bay. 17 uh, nothing. Here's what you do. All right, let's reset, and then let's shove it down their throat in the second half if you're Melbourne. you got to get this W tonight for big-time bragging rights in the county. Couldn't agree with you more, and uh, I imagine you'll get to see most of the band as long as people don't continue to walk in front of the camera without <laughs> ducking. But, you know, hey, I mean, it is what it is. There's nothing we can do about that. All right, we'll be back. With the second half in 16 minutes and 20 seconds, enjoy the halftime festivities. Hey, hot body, have fun. No, I am blood. So that they can hear up here. We're off the headsets at the moment. But you can still be heard. <laughs> Good evening, Bulldogs! Let's make some noise for the pride of Melheim, Portugal! Give a round of applause for our ROTC program! Here comes 
Jocelyn Simmons, sponsored by baseball, and Kyler, sponsored by boys basketball. After high school, Kyler plans to go to college and play basketball. There's Jocelyn and Kyler. Here comes Laura Deal, sponsored by the crew team. She plans to pursue photography and videography, and she wants to spread awareness of the effects of ocean pollution as a marine ecosystem. Gabe Spears, sponsored by the soccer team, plans to go to the University of Florida. Lauren and Nadia English, sponsored by softball, continues to play D1 softball at Stetson University, where she plans to study pre-law and business. Kendrick Wright, sponsored by the softball team. There's Nadia and Kendrick! Here comes Sarah McCormick, sponsored by the ROTC. She plans to attend the University of Notre Dame and major in applied and computation mathematics and statistics. Michael Heisey, also sponsored by ROTC, plans to go to the University of Central Florida and do a business degree, then serve in the Air Force. There's Sarah and Michael. Here comes Sophie Peterson, sponsored by Melbourne Masquerade. She plans to perform in a circus and air alerts while majoring in pre-veterinary medicine at Florida State University. Joseph Lazier, sponsored by the Gay Straight Alliance, wants to do cosmetology surgery and wants to work for Doctors Without Borders. They're surfing and Joseph. Here comes Sydney Aldegi, sponsored by the girls' soccer team. She plans to pursue a career and become a nurse practitioner. Bujo Binford, sponsored by the girls' soccer team. She's at Kaiser University and then the next four at FSU pursuing cardiac and nursing degree. Sydney and Bujo! And finally, Taryn Gilman, sponsored by the Pride of Mel High, plans to attend FIT and study aviation. Tommy Fullhart, sponsored by the Pride of Melbourne Band, wants to attend the law school and become a criminal defense attorney. Taryn and Tommy! And now, your 2022 Homecoming King and Sarah, Sarah McCormick from ROTC is your 2022 Queen. And your King. 2022. Michael Heisey from the ROTC. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause for the entire court and our King and Queens for 2022.
We will take a court picture on the 50 yard line. Thank you. Another round of applause for the 2022 Homecoming Court. items at the entrance to homecoming tomorrow night so bring baby wipes a can of soup anything non-perishable that can help the hurricane victims of ian we'll be collecting at the admission gate tomorrow night
and one. Welcome back here as halftime winds down. Congratulations to the homecoming king from the uh, ROTC. Um, not anything I ever had to worry about, homecoming king or homecoming court. Mark, what about you? <laughs> God, you're the homecoming king of this broadcast. Uh, you know, Come on, man. Buddy, I tell you, man, I the only sash I ever wore. Uh, well, never mind. How about you, uh, Billy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just talking about ice cream cones in front of us. They look pretty good. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> yep, they, they do look good. Actually, let's take a look at them. Look, there they are. Look. look at that thing, man. That thing is, wow, that does look good. All right, as we show the ice cream cone here. All right, guys, uh, I think the underlying story of the first half as the Bulldogs lead it 17 to nothing is the undisciplined play of the Palm Bay Pirates. Billy? Yeah. Um, I mean, you talked about coming in. These are two evenly matched teams. Palm Bay has a ton of talent. Uh, there's no reason why this game shouldn't be 7 nothing, 10 nothing, 3 nothing, 10 7. Palm yeah. Bay shoot himself in the foot. No doubt. And as uh, Mr. Vesey said, uh, blew the foot off and now are working on the other leg. Mark, what's your takeaway? You know, we were talking about this uh, during the break where you look at Palm Bay. They're down 17 nothing. This team is not 0-5 going into this contest. You were saying the highest-ranked team, you know, going into this Friday night. They've won the football games. Yeah. This is not like this is the worst team in the history of mankind. Should be unbeaten coming into this one. And Should I, be 5-0. and And I feel like they're still, I don't know why, even though they're down 17 nothing, there still feels like maybe there's a chance here they could click it, turn it on, get a touchdown, get back into this football game. Yeah, no doubt about it. And um, so we'll see uh, what, and I think more coach, and, and you could probably definitely speak better to this more than, Mark and I could, um, unless my mother was the head football coach because she was the one that always did the disciplining of me. Huh. But for what do you tell your team at the head? I mean, Jake Owens' teams don't do this. What do you say? Well, I'll see you just simply, I mean, if it's been a part of any kind of program I've been a part of or, or a coach I've been around, he's, he's, he's blowing his top over there. Yeah. Let him know this is, this is not Palm Bay football. This will not tolerate. You know, we're not going to do these things, and we're the age-old motto. We're, we should be in this fight. Yeah. There's no reason why we can't come back and win this football game, but we're not going to do that doing the things that we did in the first half. Two separate drives, and we don't. I don't mean to beat a dead horse here, so to speak, but two separate drives of, you know, back-to-back 15-yard penalties. That's 60 yards of offense that Melbourne shouldn't I, have. See, this is why you got to give credit to Melbourne uh, on their home turf. They capitalized on it. They took advantage of the right. opportunities, and they put it in the end zone multiple times. Look, 17-point cushion going into the third quarter. This will be very fascinating. Maybe you go back to the bread and butter. You start running the football, working that clock. This this is a game Melbourne should win, yeah. but we will see here in the third quarter what happens. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I don't know if they come out and do anything differently. We may see a little bit more Wesley Lambert. I saw Coach. Uh, I saw uh, uh, Stephen Hughes down there on the sidelines uh, after the homecoming celebration with Hunter Turner going over the iPad. And as we get set for the second half kickoff here, uh, Hunter Turner with a beautiful touchdown pass in this one. And uh, I tell you what, the good news is if you're a Bulldog fan, is you not only have the lead 17 to nothing, but you get the ball to start the second half. That they do. So we are getting set for the second half kickoff. want to thank all of our sponsors. And on the screen now, third quarter brought to you by Slow and Low Barbecue. Join us tonight at Slow and Low one hour after this game for the post-game show where we will recap everything that's happened in and a lot of out of Brevard County tonight. We got any scores, Billy? Cocoa Beach 15-0 over corner. Stone Charter. That'd be four straight shutouts for that program. Uh, Seminole scores for 23 seconds for half. They're up 29 to 14 over Coco going Ooh. into half. Uh, I did have a Titusville score. Let me scroll up here. Uh, 14 nothing or 14 seven over Atlantic. And um, let's see if I can't get us a Heritage score. Yeah, they're down at Sebastian River. They got a big win. Before Hurricane Ian over Merritt Island, who talk about Merritt Island, they won last night 35 or 45 35 over Eustis. That's been a strange 
three-week run for that program. Bayside's up 21-14 on Vieira. Half. Okay, it looks like wow. a good football game there. And no reported scores for the other ones. All right, Donnie Reber Jr. on that for us, and there's an onside kick, and wisely. And I tell you what, I don't, I don't agree with that. Mark, you putting your hands in the air. I'm my, I, I, I just... I, 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 I know, I just, I don't understand it, but hey, if that's the game plan, you're going to go with it. I was going to ask you, Alan, you know, Billy's around this program all the time. You, you've been, you know, Vieira, Coco, mm -hmm. is this your first time seeing these two teams play? This year it is, yeah. I've watched a lot of film on both of them over the last couple of weeks. Obviously, we have to to do some of the things that we do, but I've seen a lot of them on film the first time in person, and I tell you what, um, extremely impressed. There we go. There's a nice shot of the old top of the head there. <laughs> Hunter Turner, first and ten. Ball dead on the Bulldog, 50. Wesley Lambert behind him. Turns. Oh, nice rollout. Turner throws. Got him. DB fell down. Billy, a, a nicely executed play there as the DB falls down. Jalen Clark on a comeback. Uh, Turner was, you know, his first read is getting to the flats. Yeah. Go ahead, I'm sorry. He was trying to get into flats, but the defensive end from Palm Bay did a great job squeezing the back out of the backfield, not allowing him to get to the flats. So Hunter had to throw that, that deep comeback, and like you said, the, the DB fell down. Textbook rollout by Turner, and it's first and 10. Ball immediately now at the Palm Bay 35. Turner turns, gives Lambert straight up the gut. Lambert still on his feet, and finally brought down. And I'll tell you what, he got away with a little pop shot there at the end, but... Uh, Wesley Lambert with a 15-yard gain, Billy, and the ball is inside the slow and low red zone. And this or, is something or, Melbourne had to do, Alan. They had to come up and fix the O-line and control. Man-Man's got to kind of – he see, he went for the football that time. There goes – looks like yeah, we've got a holding coming in. There. Yeah, that's coming back. It's going to be on the wide receiver outside. So it's be just a 10-yard penalty, no spot foul. So – it should be second down or, f yeah, it should be uh, second. Was that first down there? So it would be yeah. first and 15. F first and 15. I hate that spot foul on that hole, Billy. Should just be 10 yards from where the ball was spotted previously. From the line of scrimmage. Right. I, you know, not from where the hold occurred. Who thought of that? Somebody who's on the offense. That's exactly right. <laughs> uh, Palaka up big on Space Coast, 47-0. Coach Cliff Nichols there at Space Coast is where John Holmes was and that Titusville program. Of course, this is Holmes' first year, but is where Titusville was for the last five years. Cliff Nichols will get that turned around. I I like Cliff. I, I like his dedication to the program. It's his sixth year there, just his second as the head coach. So, of course, Palm Bay's coach, Jake Owens, the former head coach there. Go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. I was wondering, you know, the refs taking their time, not sure where to put the ball. Now we know where we're going. So it'll be first, and as Billy said, 15-16, Turner with three wide receivers near side. In the slot is... Frank, who who is that? Frankie Rod uh, Frankie Santiago. Frankie Santiago. He, he's he's the third number three on the trips, and you got Jalen Clark number two. There you go. Uh, the second slot receiver. Balls down. Uh, what a, what a job by Lambert just picking that up, trying to gain something out of nothing there. But the Palm Bay defense playing stingy there. Those are, so, those, those penalties are drive killers. Yeah, they are. They are. What we did learn was that we are at least in field goal territory because the field goal had the distance. It yeah, ju just short. It's just short. From what? Well, field? no, it was a little wide, I thought. And the wind's died down a little bit. Yeah. Line. So that was a 42-yard attempt. Right now the ball's at the 26, 36, 43. I would, I would like to see if Hunter has time to throw the corner out here to Jalen Clark because 14 staying in tight. This is exactly where they had it before. Throws a little out. Ooh. Dropped. I tell you what, he heard footsteps that time by number 19 for the Palm Bay Pirates, Ahmed Forehand, and the sophomore makes the play, and that's going to bring up third down and 17 for Melbourne, who started off well, and as you said, Billy, the penalty killed the drive here, at least to this point. 
I know that Hunter likes a lot of pump and goes, but he does not have the time right now. No, he to, doesn't. To make those throws. And they're not blitzing either. I would expect to see a rollout here. Oh, he's going to sit in the pocket throw a little screen. screen. Got him. Oh, a little oh. high. And he didn't even have time on the screen, Billy. So that's a fourth down, and Coach Kintai is going to send out the kicking team. Right now, the ball is at the 37, or 27, 7 is 34. It's a 44-yard attempt. A little deep with the wind blowing straight this way. It's a tough try. The ball will be spotted at the... I mean, at the end of the day, it's a punt, Alan. Yeah, that's true. 34, 44-yarder coming up here. Just can't have one blocked here. Snap, hold, kick. He got a. That's going to be no good. Short again. He's got, by, he's uh, got too much air under it, Allen, but he's he's got to because that Palm Bay defense is right there. He, he can't he can't put the, the leg into it. So I'd say he's, he's, he's about two yards short, Mark. He's probably anywhere from 38 to 40 yards. And they went for it, just went short. And this thing for Palm Bay, all right, that's two straight possessions. You know, the end of the, the second quarter, you shut them down in the red zone. No points given up. And, and especially, you guys were talking about it. All right, I don't even know what was said at halftime. I don't know if I want to know what was said at halftime in that Palm Bay locker room. But now you're going to come out. Let's see what you got. You're down 17. It was a brutal first half for the offense. Let's see what you can do right here. All right, first and 10 for the Pirates. Uh, Osby in the backfield with Mobley. You've got doubles split equal to each side. Turns, gives, Osby. And 85% of the time. Second down and five, but you know what? It's five yards. Yeah. You, you'll take it. Because, again, Mark, you, you've continued to reiterate this point. Ten minutes to go. There's 32 minutes to play or 22 minutes to play in this football game. High school football, things can happen. My only issue is they've not shown the ability to be explosive since week one. They do the play. I mean, Billy... Melbourne covered that like. Spot receiver's got to make. He's got to put a hand on somebody. Uh, yeah, he's make I, some kind of block. I mean, goodness gracious! Third, that's a loss of three. Third and eight. And I mean, it was just a pound of bulldogs there, like a puppy pound. Get it? <laughs> those those quick throws out wide like that behind the line of scrimmage are just an extension of a handoff. Yeah. You know I mean, you, you you get it out so quick, but. If you're not going to have a receiver that's going to block, it doesn't do you any good. Well, the thing is, a quarterback you need to do is you need to try to lead him a little bit so he can at least get a step going forward. You can't make him plant. I get it. But you definitely want to try to do that. Under 10 to go, third quarter. Mobley drops, throws, caught, and he'll be dropped. He's close to a first down. I that was a great ball, Allen. He put it right in between the, the linebacker trying to get to his drop in the corner coming up. So Andrew Young with the catch. It's going to bring up fourth and one. And if you're Palm Bay here. I might go for this. I think you got to try to set a tone here. I Actually, they're going to give him the first down. Well, there you go. That's a big pickup then for Palm Bay. Yeah, that's huge. they got to get confidence now. Again, doubles with Osby in the back. In motion, throws, cross the middle, dropped. That linebacker gets his head around now and he's picking that football up. Yeah, I, I was going to say that was a dangerous throw. Terrius Johnson, the intended wide receiver. Hey, 15% there. They didn't run on first That's down. right. That's right. That's good, good, good looking <laughs> out, Mark. <laughs> it hit me the minute he dropped that ball. Wait a minute. <laughs> 17 nothing here. I know I looked at the statistic, and it was over 130 plays, and it was at 85% Man. run. So <laughs> I don't know what the uh, percentage or, or, or the number of plays of pass were, but there's one there. Yeah, no doubt. Again, motion, no jet sweep coming. It's Osby. Osby off tack, actually. Yeah, it's Osby. 
And a nice job there. Is that Benford? Benford makes the, the, the tackle. Uh, Donnie, uh, I'm sorry, um, Ramir Davis was the initial. Uh, so, Allen, right here, number eight and number six on this sideline for Melbourne. Yeah. Freshman. Freshman. Do you see how? Wow. Okay. The future is bright. And I'm not going to say a 15-year-old freshman. These are true 14-year-old freshmen. Freshman. Played senior, senior football last fall. Unbelievable. And this young man right here, number six, Samuel. Is that would be harrowing to me to have to play against somebody like that, knowing... How about the trust that Coach Panucci has in both of them playing on the same side of the field? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's a great point. So it's third and eight, exactly where they were before. Let's see what Mobley does this time. Play action. Throws. And that's going to fall. Balls out. Balls, Balls out. out. Melbourne says they have it, do they? As the I fight think, goes I on. Small. Nope, Melbourne, did get Melbourne it. comes oh. up with it. And how about it? Coming out, holding the ball high in the air. The Bulldogs. They haven't, they haven't signaled yet. That was... What is this call? That was Markeel Ford Watson that came out of the pile with it. And the official and officials are gonna say he was down, I'll bet you. He was he definitely wasn't down, Alan, but fourth down. They signal fourth down. I I okay. And they're gonna cause Ford momentum, I guess. I guess. All right, so what But anyway. A punt coming up here in back deep for Melbourne is going to be J.R. Samuel. Alan, uh, I coach this kid. I love this kid to death. But I'm one of those guys that I don't know about putting the freshman back on punt return. Yeah, I'm with you on that. It's like putting a rookie out there in the NFL. Same thing. Hey, that was big by Melbourne's defense. Two wide receiver screens. They stayed home, and they got it. I tell you what, I don't know how that was not blocked. I'll tell you what, he did a good job of avoiding the kicker, though, and that's why yeah. Batavo. And I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm Stephen Hughes, right here on first down, and I know he hasn't had time, but I try to catch him relaxing a little bit. See, I tell Hunter, roll right and just let one go here. Try to get Clark involved in this offense down the field here, Billy. Why not take a shot if you can do it? Absolutely. Offensive Thomas mind like Wadsworth yours. Right here from UCF here. Who's that? Thomas Wadsworth. UCF. Oh, yeah, it's Thomas Wadsworth, yeah. Wadsworth made one of the best catches I've ever seen in an all-star game when he ran over the defender. Crushed him. Absolutely crushed him. Lambert up the gut. And that, again, that Palm Bay defense is right there. Oh, we got flag. a flag. We're going to have a holding on Melbourne. Second time, second straight series, the Bulldogs have a hold, and that's a result of the pressure they're beginning to feel or have gone through this entire game, guys, of that furious Palm Bay pass rush, or rush, I should say. They're, so, they're daring Melbourne to throw the football. Yeah. So, this, this, Alan, this isn't a, a Melbourne team of years past where they're going to line up in the eye or the wing tee, and they're just going to try to run down your throat. Um there's been years where, you know, when Corey Durfus was the offensive coordinator at Mill High, Jarvis Muster was the running back. They ran belly and down G 45 times. Jarvis must have had 30 carries, but it was 200 yards rushing, you know what I mean? Yeah, no doubt. Timeouts. All right. All right, so we're going to talk to uh, Thomas Wadsworth, UCF tight end, no longer saying Melbourne tight end. Get us caught up in the life of Thomas Wadsworth. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great. Talk to me a little bit about what's going on with the Knights game last night and what your role is this season. Oh, yes, sir. We had a game last night against SMU. We, we beat them pretty good. Uh, we're 4-1 right now, which looks good. But for me, uh, I'm just on scout team. I'm just uh, on the uh, practice squad. I'm, Get, getting your feel, right? Getting your, getting doing feeling, your yeah. freshman stuff. You're doing yes, what freshmen do and playing for Gus Malzahn. And uh, what's that like? Tell us about Gus. Oh, Gus Malzahn, he's, a, he's an unbelievable coach. He's just got like a, a sixth sense for the game. And uh, he lives uh, football. That's his whole life. And he's, he's real good at it. Go ahead, Mark. You got a question for him? 
Why'd you go with UCF for our viewers? Why'd you pick it? Um, well, it's first of all, it's close to home, and they got a really good program there. And they've been uh, the co coach Blackman. He recruited me, the tight ends coach there, and I, I really like really liked him. He, I thought he was a great guy, and uh, I saw a real future there. And um, so that, yeah, that's pretty much why I picked that program. And excited for the Big Twelve when Absolutely. you can get out there. Yes, sir. So next year we're going to be in the Big Twelve. We're going to uh, come from the American Division. We're going in there, and it's, we're really excited about that. Here with Thomas Wadsworth, former Melbourne tight end. And how does it feel to hear former Melbourne tight end? You're here. To, I, does it does it chew at you a little bit? You can't be out there tonight. Absolutely. I've been thinking the whole time. I'm, I've just been wishing I could, like, suit up one more time and go out there and play with my boys again. All right, let's talk about the play that went viral last year in the All-Star game. Thomas Wadsworth caught a pass, and he was playing in the Central Florida All-Star game last year, and you absolutely stink rolled a DB into the end zone for one of the best touchdowns I've ever seen. Take me through that real quick. I mean, you didn't run around anybody, Thomas. You just ran through them. Talk about that. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, I, I got to thank my quarterback there, Davin Widener. He's a quarterback now at Ole Miss. And uh, throughout practice, we were, like, trying to pick up on the playbook there. And uh, that was one of the, the routes that I was really looking forward to running. It was just a, a vertical route, like a little pop pass to the tight end. And, uh... I just, instead of, like, juking around, I'm kind of a heavier guy. I decided I was just going to run right through the guy to get to the end zone. i tell you what, I tell you what, man, it is it's good to talk to you. Will, you. will you make us a promise that you'll stay in touch with us so that we know what's going on? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thomas, Absolutely. thank you so much. Thomas Wadsworth, UCF. Good luck. Tight end. Yeah, no doubt. Going to the Big 12 next year. And, uh, Billy, Get us caught up on what we've missed having a conversation with uh, Thomas. Well, we missed a, 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 a handful of uh, issues with the Melbourne O-line this drive. <laughs> uh, Hunter Turner makes a heck of a play, avoiding two defenders, drops a diamond to Jalen Clark, but now we got a lineman downfield. So. And then we just, yeah. So, and I'll tell you the other thing tonight, guys. We talked about this at the beginning of the, at the, of the uh, 7v7 Elite. Uh, pre-game show going into the game last week prior to the game prior to hurricane ian uh, melbourne had scored 18 touchdowns this year 10 of them were on the offensive side of the ball eight of them were on the defensive side of the football kudos to the melbourne bulldogs tonight because they have not done the one thing that everybody else has done against palm bay and that's turned the football over yeah i don't i mean it's just it's again you said it before palm bay is is, is one of the best Numbers-wise, seeded teams in our county right now. Yeah. Um, they, I, I think Coach Owens and the guys will get it figured out. But for me, the number one thing is discipline. Number two, get my offense right. Yeah. Yep. Bill Greg. Palmer, Alan Z, and Mark Moses with you here. Third down and a trip to the Bahamas for a first. Throws. Oh, yeah, my man. goodness. Caught at the 40. Everybody's in the way, but he'll be caught. I tell you what. That's Hunter Turner. Uh, Hunter Turner avoided that pressure. What a play by the Melbourne Bulldogs. Allen, that was gigantic. Palm Bay was sleeping on that in the secondary, and all of a sudden, bang, long play down the field. Who Ryan, caught that, Billy? Ryan Cabrera caught it. Melbourne's already ready to get back to the line of scrimmage, and Palm Bay's walking up the field. Yep. Yep. Good. Well, uh, that That's all Hunter Turner. Oh, no. Just fall on it. Uh, and Palm Bay's going to get the ball. Nobody wants to cut. Nobody wants to pick it up. And Palm Bay catches an unbelievable break, Billy. Hunter Turner has to fall on that football. I yeah. agree. You just look. Don't try to get fancy. Just fall on it for the loss. And that's where the hurry up hurt Melbourne right there. Um, yes. They tried to go quick, try to get Palm Bay, and they weren't prepared themselves. Look, the big guys, that, that pass play. 60 yards, 62 yards, 58 yards, somewhere in that somewhere neighborhood. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. The big guy's got to get downfield too quick. Your line's tired. You know, and, yeah, I agree with you, Billy. The hurry-up yes. heart right there. Finally, Palm Bay, finally. We're here midway through the third quarter. They finally get a break on a ball. Unbelievable turn of events there. I, me, me, Caleb, and Blue talk about us all the time. I'm a hurry-up guy, Alan. Yeah. But I'm going under center. Yeah. Because, because of the thing you just told about Lyman being that tired. Yeah. We're that, not in the Big 12. We're not in the Pac-12. Right. 
If yep. you're going to do that, you better have your line in a lot more condition. I, I could not agree with you more. All right, you got to go. Look, if you're Palm Bay, all right, the wide receiver screens are not working. Try something else. If you're Palm Bay with 350 to go in the third, this is a must this score drive. Some point, something to give you just confidence moving forward. Heritage is up 10 0 over Sebastian River, and it looks like that was Trenton Carey on the, on the, uh, the carry there for the uh, Pirates. Okay, so hopefully Osby is still relatively good. I know he was hobbled, him and Zach Emery Foster. And that's the thing as we continue to, to talk about Palm Bay's offense as Zach Emery Foster is out there right now. He's their playmaker on this offense. You've got to find a way to get him the ball in space if he can make the plays. And I'll tell you what. Man. The offensive line for Palm Bay completely telegraphed that play from the start. They stood up, and they all turned left as if it was some sort of like a robotic thing. Melbourne read it perfectly. Third yeah, and they, seven. Alan, they, they, they turn left. They try to flat step cross over and get, and get, you know, a little zone block going on there. Just Melbourne's right there. Yeah, they just they read it beautifully. You know, it, this is such a big rivalry game between these two teams in this county. If you're a Melbourne alumni and you play defense for the Bulldogs, you've got to be proud of the, the effort tonight by this defense. Well, we'll ask one after this play. <laughs> Third and six now. And that is Curry in the backfield, I think. Here we go. Nice play. Nice rollout. First down for Palm Bay. And that's a play to the tight end there. That's Paul. Donnarumo and 2.18 to go here in the third and Donnarumo picks up a huge first down. Well, Billy, you heard the question posed from Mark. What say you? Um, I mean, historically, Melbourne's had good defenses. You know, it, it, it's been offensively struggling. You know, Hunter Turner, since he's arrived, has been able to, to air the ball out. You know, most passing we've had in school history. Um, Obviously, the defense coordinator, you know, Coach Panucci learned from coach, guys like Coach Grish and Todd Wilson and mm -hmm. a teammate of mine, and, you know, he learned from Eddie Edwards, who was a D.C. when he played here. And it's just it's the model at Melbourne for as long as I can remember was play great defense and, and control the ball on offense. And, you know, they there was a lot of close games that were won 6 to nothing, 10 nothing, 12 nothing, and there was blowouts too. But I think Coach Grish, I'd have to go back to the year, Allen, but I think he had five or six shutouts one season. Yeah. Well, I know that was kind of before you guys had kind yeah, of no. around and, you know, before, you know, Wilson was still here and, you know, Melbourne kind of was down for, you know, 20 A couple years, yeah. Well, you know, even down, you know, a lot of people, Coach Grish put in a lot of 500 seasons. You know what I'm saying? Five and five years he had. And, man, he had some terrific offensive lines, too. I think that's the. I think that's how high school football is right now. Unless you're Coco Rockers, it's just a lot of waves of up and down. Look yeah. at Titusville. Look at Astronaut. Uh, look what Palm Bay's trying to dig themselves out of. You know. Yep. Uh, Mark Ainsley at Heritage. They're having a difficult year after having a great year last year. I think that's just the nature of high school football in our county, uh, especially with the option to go wherever you want, whenever you want. Uh, it's a good drive so far by Palm Bay. They're best of the night. The problem is we're less than a minute left here in the third quarter. You know, Coach Grish's final two seasons, he was five and four and five and five. So he built that. You know, he's built. And then, of course, Tony Rowell took over yeah. uh, a team that, you know, Coach Grish had and, and, and went seven and four that year. And that was a turning point. And then, unfortunately, we had the COVID year. And Mobley throws high. And it'll be fourth and two. And I, Palm Bay just doesn't have a choice here with 33 seconds to play in the third. They're obviously going to go for this. I like to play to the other side again. I'm not sure why they haven't gone back to the tight end here on any of the next couple of uh, plays. But I think they need to. He's a big target. The other thing, too, is they need to try to get Terry Jordan involved, the uh, junior wide receiver. He's big. He's tall. And if he... he the two balls that were thrown at him earlier, Coach, he had position. The balls were just overthrown. What is timeout? Palm timeout. 
and Alan, you know, for, our, for me, the, the rough years for Melbourne is, is they couldn't keep kids on campus. Yes. They were losing kids left and right. Um, you know, I've told you this before when you've interviewed me at West Melbourne. My senior team at West Melbourne went to seven different high schools. <laughs> seven. You know what I mean? So so you, you keep a, a, a team from West Melbourne or in Palm Bay Youth League, you keep these youth league teams going to one high school, there's there's a lot of good football in Bavard County. Yes, there is. But I think that was Melbourne's problem in that era. There was the Hunter Lees, the Kaminskys, the, all those guys that, that led left, and Nigel Scott went to Heritage, and, you know, uh, those other guys went to Vieira, and, and rightfully so. Kevin you know, Kevin Smith and uh, – or Kevin Mays and yeah. Eric Smith had a great time. You know, it, it's – it's. Yep. Here it is. For all intent and purpose for me, this is the football game, unless some crazy stuff happens in the fourth quarter. I don't think it's too early to say that with 33 seconds to go in the third. It's fourth and two, and Palm Bay needs to get this first down. Karee is in the backfield next to Mobley. You've got three wide receivers, fires, and Incomplete. drops. He was, you know, that. That is the same play that yeah. they ran to beat Heritage on the goal line. Mobley underthrew him. Threw the ball into the ground there. As a quarterback, you are supposed to obviously put that ball out in front and load. That's where you want that ball. You don't want to put it up there for any DBs to come back, but that's entirely too low. Melbourne takes over first and ten, so the turnover does not hurt the Bulldogs. And they'll come out with trips to the right, Billy, and Lambert to the right of Turner. So see what we got here coming up. The give is the Lambert. Lambert. You just kind of feel like that's a gain of 11. And what you feel like right now is that that should take us to the end of the third quarter. There, Melbourne should be in no hurry for the rest of this. this no. Nope. nope, I agree. I agree as well. And that's exactly what they're going to do. So that's going to be the end of the third quarter. With your score. The Melbourne Bulldogs 17, the Palm Bay Pirates nothing. Back with the start of the fourth in just a minute. I woke up by Marin Island, huh? Yep. All right, welcome back here. We were just talking about O'Galley. Uh, asked and answered, Billy, how would O'Galley respond? Pretty good tonight, huh? 22 nothing over Palm Coast at the moment. Yes, indeed. How's Coco doing? Uh, last I saw was 29-14 and a half. Tigers. Coco Beach is up 28 nothing. Rockwood is up 7 nothing. That's it? Uh, they must have had something going on. I mean, I don't know what the start time was or, or what. but uh. They're down to Carrollwood, Miami. That's a team they were not scheduled to play. They were supposed to play Manatee, but uh, Manatee had extensive storm damage. And uh, so second, second and one from the 50, Allen. You take a shot? Yeah, I do. I do. I, I'm, a, I'm an old quarterback, Billy. I'll take a shot on all three downs. But I like the conservative play call there because I think it's smart and it turns into a big game. That's why I'm sitting up here with you guys and not down there wearing a headset. <laughs> First and ten for Melbourne. Good play call by Stephen Hughes. I don't know. I mean, w would you say I don't? I, Melbourne has to have under 150 yards of offense. Tonight. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I know they had a 68-yard pass. 
But other than that, there really hasn't been much. They didn't come in averaging a ton of yards, Billy. He's 268 a game, and for a Hunter Turner quarterback team, I was talking to John Turner earlier, and that just seemed low to me. But that's what we, you know, that's what we have. And that's Wesley Lambert again. And now you ride the back of Lambert to the finish line, right? Yeah, Palm Bay's got hands on hips. That was just a little trap. Uh, you know, backside guard pulled. So Lambert picking up seven, six, seven yards a clip. And you, you, you just got to love. Just run that clock, guys. Tick, 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 tick if you're Melbourne. Luke, our pleasure. And, of course, Luke, thank you for all that you do. Dean Stewart Photography is uh, phenomenal here in Brevard County. And Another penalty on Palm Bay. Yep. And, and, and Luke, I'm just going to say this on the broadcast. I am ready for some more meatloaf, and I'll just leave it at that, buddy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that is one of the best families, Alan. Yeah, no doubt. Luke and his, his, his uh, wife and two kids. Yeah, uh, amazing. Just great people. Yep. First and ten. Ball at the 25. Turner, little screen pass to the wide receiver. Quick route there and caught and out of bounds. That's a gain of seven, Billy. That's You'll cool. take it. Cabrera, yep. 10-25 to go in the game, and it's all Melbourne right now. So Rockwood is in the third quarter. Really? Absolutely. I mean, uh. Carroll Wood was no pushover. They were three and one, I think, coming into this. And the Raiders are good defensively, but there are issues for that team. Throws caught. Jalen Clark. Oh, Clark. I can't see. You have to tell me. Yep. <laughs> no, nope, he's not in. He's down Close. at. Uh, he's down at the one. Inside the Scott Sporting Good red zone. And it's going to be first and goal. Jalen Clark gets all the way down. And this would put the nail in the coffin. Jamie Fain. Look at that update from Jamie Fain. Got you, Luke. Got you, buddy. I'll, I'll text you. From the goal line. This to essentially put this away. And nice job. He got in, though. Touchdown, Melbourne Bulldogs. Pending the extra point, 23-0 Melbourne. Hunter Turner with the sneak. Alan, I'm, again, I, I'm in a group with a lot of coaches from around the county. We yep. talk about this weekly, and, and, and none of us, none of us had, had any kind of comments about how this game would be like this. Everybody thought it would be a close game. Yep. But the turnover, uh, the penalties, not even turnovers, the penalties that Palm Bay's have have shot themselves in the foot. That sideline looks lifeless. Yeah. No, you're right. And there's going to be a lot of questions that are going to need to be answered amongst themselves. This team should be 5-0. and They should have beat Harmony. Yeah. I mean, it's that simple. They should be 5-0, and, and they're not playing like a 5-0, 4-1 mm -hmm. football team right no, now. No, they're certainly not. You look at the other side, Melbourne, this is a resume-building statement win for them. Yeah, that's a great point, Mark, because last year at this time they came into this football game mm -hmm. at 3-2, and two, which is exactly what they are now. They get a one-point win. Now, that was in the midst of a three-game winning streak that Melbourne won on the win 10 straight last year and route to an 11-win season. But you know what, Billy? I think this district is Melbourne's to lose. And uh, a game like this has got to build some confidence for them. 100% it does going into this seat, you know, through the rest of the season. I think they got a big district game next week against Harmony. Uh, so, you know, this definitely propels them for, uh, you know, uh, momentum-wise. I know that they wanted to play this game. I know they wanted to play this game sooner than what is coming up, right? But I think it's a good thing the way it turned out for Melbourne to play Harmony on the 18th. I mean, that game, I, is that the date now? It yeah, it's the 18th. Times, yeah, it's so. down to the 18th now. Thank you, Jamie Fain, for those updates, too. Just a little pooch here. and Alan, for me, and then this game is not over. I, you know, I'm not going to say that, but if Melbourne holds on 
and gets their third straight win against Palm Bay. Right. It took from 87 to 2004 to get three wins. Right. That's true. That's a great point. And now for the first time in program history, it'll be three straight over the Pirates. And two of those, you and I two years ago, I'll never forget this. i got to tell this story. Two years ago, Billy and I, as COVID, were over at Florida Tech Panther Stadium because they hadn't yet shut the door, I don't think, on the Panthers. Maybe they had. Not important to the story. But uh, we're sitting there outside. It's cold. Billy and I are broadcasting. And Melbourne beats Palm Bay 51-6. I'll never forget how giddy you were about that that, that night, Billy, and how happy you were uh, about that win. And you just... I just thought it was terrific to be able to, to broadcast that game with you because that was the first time in 12 years they had beaten them and the first time ever at Palm Bay. And it was the tied for the largest margin of victory in, 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 in series history. Right. And uh, for me, uh, Alan, I was on the, that team in 2007 that beat them. So right. So you know, to be there, it was, it was great. But I can tell you right now, I know a lot of Palm Bay alumni. Some are on that coaching staff and some are around town. Some are watching this video right now. Right. This thing's sitting well with Palm Bay High School. No, it can't. Because, because I've played against guys. I'm friends with guys. And one thing, that when you're at Palm Bay High School, you don't lose to Melbourne. And there's Dan you know. Burke's tradition at Palm Bay is like no other in this county. Now, Coco may have more state championships than does Palm Bay, but no head football coach has meant more to this county and to the program than Burke meant to Palm Bay. That program, under Burke's guidance and tutelage, Mark, went to the playoffs in 21 of 23 seasons. He's a Hall of Famer. He's the winningest head football coach in the history of Brevard County. Nobody was better. He was a two-time state champion. He produced some of the best players to ever come out of this county. Reggie Nelson, Mike DeGore, the list goes on and on and on and on. And you know what, Billy? You're right. This can't sit well. Not that they got beat, but how they got beat how they lost this football game and, tonight. And listen, Alan, there's nine minutes and 15 seconds left in this game. And if you think Stephen Hughes and Melbourne are going to let off the gas. No. Don't, no. Don't, don't, turn, don't turn this broadcast off. Right. I mean, look, Palm Bay, I feel bad saying this. They might have more penalty yards than total offense in this game. I think, you're, I think you could be right, Mark. That's got to be the most disheartening if you're this yeah. football team. And we're going to get a timeout with 9-15 to play. And it's not that we are, and that's going to be, a, it's not, listen, we're not here to criticize. It's not our job. And we always want to pump these student athletes up because that's really our number one priority. But you can't help, you can't, you just can't overlook what went on here tonight. No, Alan and Josh O'Neill tuning in. It's his daughter's 18th birthday. Happy birthday, Bailey O'Neill, one of the Melbourne trainers. All right. 18. Josh, you, if you weren't in trouble before, you're in trouble now, buddy. I got a 24-year-old daughter who'll be 25 next week, and I got to tell you, man, yes, the teenage years, having a daughter are, are fun, can be tough, but, man, wait till they become 18 to that 20. Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday, Bailey. Happy birthday, Bailey. Go get them. <laughs> Third and 10 for Palm Bay here for Mobley. And even if you're Palm Bay right now, you still want you got to make some plays, man. You can build some momentum. That's picked off. That's He had him too. On the play. Yeah, let's see what the flag is here. That flag's that coming. That's Kevaris Cohen with a lot of Palm Bay bloodline. Yeah, you ain't lying about that. The flag was way after the interception, so yeah. I think we're going to have a block on Melbourne. But like a volleyball match for a second, but <laughs> Bulldogs come up with it. PA guy said uh, like a volleyball match for a second there. See what the White Hat says the call is here, and they're walking that ball. They're going to call PI. Yeah, they did against Melbourne, so they call pass interference. This will be a 15-yard penalty. Palm Bay catches a break and picks up a first down. So that negates the interception. That was a very, very, very late flag. I, I don't know that I saw a P.I. there. 9.07 to go. 
I think that's the first big penalty on Melbourne all night. Yeah, it is. That's the first 15-yard penalty on them. Coming up tomorrow on Brevard Sports Network, 6U to 14U Youth Football will tomorrow be up at Space Coast to see the Panthers take on the Eustis Panthers tomorrow. So Caleb Brown and Jackson Robb will alternate duties on that. What is used football is really taking off here on Brevard Sports Network, and we certainly appreciate everyone. Mobley, blitz. Ball's out. Ball is out, still out. Melbourne's got it. And Melbourne recovers. And if they didn't get the interception, is he calling an incomplete pass? I, I believe he is. He uh, called an incomplete pass. <laughs> that is a fumble. Yeah, it's Come a fumble on. all day. Was he the referee at the Tuck Rule game? No, Alan, I don't know if you remember the ACY Super Bowl when we had a big issue last year or two years ago when the, the, the refs basically stopped until we found it. The game stopped until we found another ref. I remember that. Was, I was, was broadcasting. Uh, I don't I, – hey. <laughs> That's the guy, but I'm not going to go any further. All right, I got you. I got you. I got you. That's when the parking lot's filled up with the blue and reds, right? Yes. Yes, I do remember that. Made for a pretty picture on the screen. Second, and forever Mobley rolls, throws, in and out of the hands of his tight end. And I tell you what, Mobley can put it in his tight end's hands any better than that. you you got to help your quarterback. Yeah. This is the problem right now. It's going to be third and ten. Melbourne, or Palm Bay, escapes two turnovers here. They get a P.I., and then an incomplete pass is called. 8.55 to go. 24 nothing Bulldogs. we got to get you out there for the Super Bowl this year on November 19th. Well, we're coming. We're there. It's already on the calendar. We'll be there. I know we have your Super Bowl, the Super Bowl that Rockledge is in as well. That's the following weekend at, or the weekend before that, actually, at Lakeland. We'll be there, too. I'll tell you what. Coco Tigers 12U. Yeah. One of the best 12U football teams I've seen in quite a long time. Really? Mobley gets out of trouble, and he just dumps it up. Probably would have been better had he tried to scoot up the sidelines there. 8.48 to go, 24-0. Bulldogs on top, and it's fourth and ten. And, and I, I mean, there's, obviously there's nothing to talk about here other than the, you're going for it. You know, I think it's a good night in Brevard County as we sit across from Holmes Regional Medical Center, and we haven't seen one helicopter all night, and that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, you usually see about two or three first flights. Well, yep, never, I haven't seen any tonight. I want to give a big – go ahead. Oh, go, go no, ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Do you got another trivia question for us? I do. I'm okay. going to ask it was... at the five-minute mark, so make sure okay. you remind me. All right. I want to give a big shout-out here. Uh, we obviously did a lot of softball coverage this year. The defending and reigning 6A state champ Melbourne Bulldog softball team, Bajie Francic, the best high school pitcher I've ever seen in person, myself and Jazzy. Oh, uh, yeah, she committed to Florida State recently. Congratulations, Miss Francic. Fourth and ten, Mobley drops back. Um, that one lobbed out, and it'll be turnover on downs. Great pressure on the quarterback, Nate Jennings. So it'll be first and ten for the Bulldogs from... The Melbourne 45 here. And you know this Melbourne defense, they don't want to give any points up. They want no. the shutout with about eight minutes to go here. Over your rivals, absolutely. Well, Mark, and if people couldn't tell, I'm sitting here watching Jeff Panucci on the sideline. <laughs> and he is very, very animated about that, <laughs> that incomplete call. Still upset about it, but he, yeah, he wants to shut out more than anybody. He had a lot of them last year. He did a really good job with this defense last year. He was uh, finished as our runner-up for coordinator of the year behind Brian Helton at uh, Merritt Island, and it was tough not to give Helton that award last year. Oh, throwback, and you're Got him wide open. Oh, it was wide open out. down the it left. Was, it yeah, was, it was a jet sweep throwback into it's a double pass. No, I told you Steve Hughes is not going to let He's off the not going to let off the gas. I like the call. Dangerous, but I like it. Is it just incomplete, or is it like a fumble where it's backwards? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, 
it has to be a backwards pass for him to be able to throw it again, so it should be a fumble. Yeah. But they're marking it incomplete. I want to thank Kendall Signs for their support of youth sports in Brevard County. Incomplete. The clock didn't move. Second and ten for Turner and the Bulldogs offense. And I want to thank all of you as well out there for your support of BSN. You have helped us grow into something we never oh. – Oh, wow. Daniel Man Man Harris. Wow. That is one of the – Daniel Man on a mission. Daniel Man Man Harris. Wow. He's an athlete. Did, oh. did you see what he just did? That is highlight reel. When you put your recruitment tape together, that will be on there. That is a candidate for play of the year in this. He went up and grabbed that ball with one that, hand. And he was four yards from the quarterback, so it was coming out <laughs> of the muscle. <laughs> and he had a look when he returned. He's like, look, this might be our best chance to score a touchdown. I better get it in. If it, I'm Jake you, Owens, he's in the backfield. You know you see the jugs machine and your hands are right oh. there. That's what that <laughs> That's was. That was incredible. What a play. Incredible play by Daniel Man Man Harris. It's a basketball level type. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Well, he is 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, yeah, was... <laughs> and the way he was just shrugging tacklers off of him. That's crazy. He, he was making plays in the first quarter. Now he showed up here in the fourth. Yeah. I'll tell you this much, Alan. I don't know why they don't throw him the football. I don't either. It's a great question. <laughs> Oh, no, I don't know that there's anybody in this. And we got a flag here. Delay, game. Delay a game. Yeah. See, that's that's inexcusable. Alan, that's 100% on the coaching staff. Yeah, no doubt. There is no doubt about that. <laughs> I can't wait for the, to see that play again on your. Uh, your yeah, I road. can't. I hope I got it because it, it, I, I went to turn the camera. I'm sure. I, I think I did, though, because I think it happened so fast I didn't have time to turn the camera. Somebody's got a huddle of it. Yeah, no doubt. That. And that's why Daniel Man Man Harris is going to play D1 P5 football. All right. Palm Bay can't be taking a timeout because they're out of them. There should be a water break, but it's about two minutes early. You know, 8.25 to go. I feel like we've been in eight or nine minutes for the last 15 minutes. I, you are not alone in feeling that way. For a game that's been predominantly done on the ground tonight, it, this game is two hours and 23 minutes old in terms of our broadcast. And we came on at 10 of. So two hours and 13 minutes for a high school football game. It's a long one. Uh, Alan, every game I've done this year, the first half goes by like nothing. Right. And the second half, it's like. That's Caleb's fault. I always just blame him for that. All right. First and 16. That's a quick handoff up the middle. Eight seventeen, tick tock, tick tock, and I think if you're Palm Bay now, you need to regroup and get out of here and try to build some momentum moving forward. This one's out of reach. Um, Let me I ask you your opinion. Real yeah, quick. go ahead. Running, you played quarterback. Running your quarterback to the sideline every play. Nope, I, I, I didn't do it. I, I my, my coach and I got into a tremendous. I I glad you brought that up because my high school coach and I, I, I would do that, and it's and but. It's wasted, wasted. I hate it. So you you want to send the play in, let's rotate out the third wide receiver every day. I don't care. I'm not running to the sideline. Where's the urgency? It's seven minutes left in the game. Right. I agree. Throws. Caught. Out of his hands. I mean, Story I, of the night. Yep. I, I, youth football is one thing. But, you know, even that, I see guys rotating backs, rotating receivers, or – you know, they got a simple wristband. They're giving them a, a blue 32, you know, yeah. whatever it might be. I, I, I know. It is. Ran by. I, I, I just, I couldn't stand it. It was one of my pet peeves as a quarterback. I hated it. Hated it. Why am I running to the sidelines, Coach? Especially when the ball's on the left half. That's exactly right. On the far half from your side. And you still see it in big-time college football sometimes. Absolutely. I mean, it's not. I'm not just calling it out because that's what's happening. Right. It just. It just reminded me of a lot of. Right. No, you're right. That's one of my pet peeves. As long as uh, when it's fourth and one and I'm in shotgun six yards deep, that yeah. drives me. Down. Oh, and Caleb said you can't stand that. He talks about that all the time. Mobley steps up plenty of time. Throws oh, great play. defensive play there. Who was that? Number 21 there. Wyatt Watava. Wyatt Watava. Good play by Wyatt, and that's going to bring up fourth and 12. Alan, you're going to call his name a lot in the spring of Melbourne baseball. Yeah. 
stud. What position does he play? Couldn't tell you. I just know he can, he's got a, he's, he swings a stick very well. Does he now? Actually, I think he plays center field. Stay tuned. Coming up, we're going to give another another uh, trivia question to you. Go ahead, Billy. That's coming up at the five minute mark of the game. Some new ones Seven twenty five to go in the game. At the five minute mark, I'll give away another. $25 right. gift certificate. You got it? Who are the two Bulldog head coaches with a winning, winning record against Palm Bay? There is two Melbourne High School head coaches with a winning record against Palm Bay. Okay, let's so find So we, we need two uh, names. One of them is pretty obvious. Let's go, Blue. Get up, Phil. Right there, Blue. Right there, Blue. Got him. It's game. That's it. And... First on the scene there was uh, was that Watava again? No, that was uh, that was Barnhill that got that sack. So again, the trivia question is: Who are the two Melbourne High School head football coaches with a winning record against Palm Bay High School? Hmm. I know you know the answer, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say. And, and, and I don't. It's, it's going to blow people's mind because they're not going to think of, of it. Right. I'm seeing some of the answers, and I'm like, you know, Moffitt put Todd Wilson. Uh, Todd Wilson was one in uh, six or seven against Palm Bay. There you go. I couldn't tell you what Joey Wiles was without looking at the record book. But I, he would, you know, again, there was a 20-year period where Melbourne only had three wins. Hunter Turner. Hunter Turner still on his feet. And, boy, they came across, and Hunter got down. I, I got to tell you, there there is one thing, though, and I'm going to say this. I... I <laughs> Billy, I don't put Hunter Turner in that position at this point in the game in a rivalry game like this. I yeah, love again, coach. It's still seven minutes left in this I, game. I love, I love these coaches, and, and but I'm not sure I'm putting my quarterback out there like that. I haven't seen any right answers come through yet. Uh, okay. All right. Keep me posted. First and ten. Turns gives Wesley Lambert straight up the gut, and, and every time he's touched the ball, in the second half, it's been at least six or seven yards, and it is again, and it's second and four. And those are gut punches to a defense at this yeah, time of the game. Yeah, no doubt. Jason Martin says Jason Martin and David Kintai. Jason Martin's right, but Jason, <laughs> you, can, you can't win. Pick another question. <laughs> that, that's right. Uh. <laughs> Man, here we go. Here we go. Down the sidelines. Good play. And, uh, yeah. So pick another question because Coach Martin can't win. Well, if he gets another one right, he might have to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Coach Martin has the biggest margin of victory over Palm Bay, though, right? 51-6? That is, that, yeah, that's the that's the uh, tied for the Palm, um, Palm Bay beat Melbourne 51-6. That is the largest margin of victory tied for Palm Bay. I got you. I got you. Yes, Co Coach Martin's laughing at you, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we asked that one. All right. Let's see here. All right. In 2021, Hunter Turner ran for two touchdowns, and Christian McDonald booted both extra points in a 14-13 victory for Melbourne. So, Alan, this is just last season. Who was the player who blocked the extra point to give Melbourne a victory over Palm Bay. Again, Ooh. Who's the player that blocked the extra point last year to give Melbourne a victory? Over I don't Palm know Bay? that one either. But I know you do. I know you do. Right? I hope. Oh, yeah. Okay. I love the – you hear that confidence in him? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love it. I've I learned love. a lot about Billy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> First and 10, 6.05 to play. Cyril Hopping says Gavin Rao. Is that correct? That is correct. There you go, Cyril. Cyril is eligible to win. Ryan is no longer a student here. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Straight up the gut. Gavin Rao. I remember that now. I do remember. Ryan playing. Cody, Cody Black and Daniel Manman pushing each other after the play, and then Cody's talking to him. Come on, man. Right. We're going we're gonna to go to stick and shake after this game. What we, what we got going on here? Right. Now they're, talk, now they're talking back and yeah. forth across the line. I like it. I like the fire. I like the fire, though. Seminoles up 29-21 with nine minutes left in the game. Coco still with a chance in this one. 
second down for the Bulldogs. Second down and four for the Melbourne offense. Five twenty-five to go. Neither team needs any ejections going to the district. Oh, that's play. six games. Six games if you fight. It's the end of your year. Ooh. Yep, Turner, Turner wisely tucks it and tucks his head. We got battles going on, individual battles going on all over the field. All over the field. Uh, Mr. Hopping, you want to, is it a $25 gift card to slow and low? Yeah. Yeah, $25 gift, $25 gift card to slow and low barbecue in Vieira. And you're going to be there uh, post game, right? Uh, yeah, you come up tonight, I'll give it to you. We'll pick up your check, and if you want to message me, or $25 of your check, let me be clear about that. <laughs> it's been a long day. Right? Uh, or if you send me, Cyril, you have my uh, cell phone number, text me your address, I'll pick you up a car tonight and put it in the mail on Monday. Third and 16 for the Melbourne offense. Close to offsides, but he gets back. Turner with three wide receivers split here to the near side. Lambert to his left, 425 to go, and I would be in no hurry as Mark and Billy have both alluded to here tonight. Great trivia questions. Throws, caught. Frankie Gonzalez. I like the play, stay in bounds. 24 nothing here in at worst, you now have the wind to your back, so we are in kicker's field goal range. He was about two, three yards short from 42. I think we're in his range right now with the wind at his back. I I know we keep talking about this. I did not see this as the score. I didn't I, either. No, no way. Impressive, impressive performance by Melbourne tonight. Mark, did you get anybody on the show this week? I'm, I'll ask you after this. Here you go. Because I'm curious to know about this. I'm interested in one particular college football game tomorrow. Turner gives Lambert up the gut. Lambert has been first down. Yeah, I tell you what, that's a that's a that's a, a, a that play for Lambert and that offensive line. Kudos to the middle of that Melbourne offensive line tonight because they, in this second half, whatever adjustments were made, have dominated that Palm Bay defensive front. And Alan, I, 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 we, we talked about this pregame. And if it didn't make any players mad, I would tell you there's a guy in a pink cap with pink sleeves that's 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 been upset since the start of this game when that Palm Bay ran that flag through Melbourne coming out of that tunnel. Yeah. Because that's a guy right there that, that you want to talk about bleeding green and white. Jeff Panucci. You don't disrespect. He's not going to allow his players to do that. Yep. You don't do that on his field. Jeff Panucci, yep. And that's exactly where it started. Turner throws wisely, gets it out of the end zone there. Good play. Um, Oklahoma, Texas tomorrow, Red River shootout, right? Both teams have been very disappointing. I mean, multiple uh, losses. First time in how long this game has taken place with neither team ranked. I mean, yeah, both teams with two losses. Both teams go into the SEC. Texas moving forward. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, that's – it's I just – Look, the, the expectations to be great every season for all these programs is not easy. No, nope. is Dylan Gabriel playing or is he? That uh, it might I'm be game time decision because he got injured in that last game. Yep. I'm actually going to go watch Oklahoma play uh, West Virginia when I go up and watch Davis. Uh, How is Davis doing? I noticed last week we didn't put him in our college update. He didn't have stat last week, but that doesn't mean he didn't play well. How's oh, Davis oh, doing? He played and missed two, two, two big tackles. <laughs> yeah. And I let him know, but uh, you know he he met that running back from uh, Texas, that big 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 joker. He said his I got you. He got tree trunks and thighs, and Davis wouldn't put his helmet on his thigh and uh, looked up and there that, that guy was going right by him. So, I hear you. Um, well, hey, as as a Mountaineer fan. I mean, look, you might be able to see them play at UCF moving forward. Well, he's a Mountaineer fan because a former uh, uh, player of his is a cornerback for West Virginia. Once Davis is drafted, uh, Billy will retire the West Virginia it, it, shirt. It, 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 it's <laughs> all right. It's not much better. Florida oh, okay. State, yeah. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the education of Billy Palmer continues tonight for you. Yeah, I'm learning a lot. I really am. <laughs> Turner. Looking. Throws. I think, I think we're going to have a holding call. Yeah, I would think so. That ball is caught but out of bounds. 
If it's not a hold, I'd be shocked. Turner just I know Turner looked like he was out there doing the uh, the Macarena with his shoulders. One fifty one to go in the game. No holding call. All right, so the field goal team will come on and an opportunity here for a field goal and I tell you what, now that the wind is back, Trevor Causey with an opportunity. He's over two tonight. This ball will be spotted at the 26, 27. It's a 37 yard field goal for Causey. Snap is good. The hold is perfect. Kick blocked. is blocked. Block you cover. Gonna, you got to cover. They're going to try it. Little flip there to the other side of the field. Block the oh. Back. Oh, block in the back. Uh, oh. Another one. That's on. Another hey, just, one over yeah. here. Look at this down here. This is, uh, they took three huge cheap shots, and I'll call them exactly that. All three of those shots were uncalled for by, they were blindside hits, Billy. There was three. For no All reason. three hits were blindside hits. There is nothing sportsmanlike about those hits. The Melbourne fans are not happy. Well, they that. shouldn't be. Those They're were uncalled happy. for. Those were, All three were blindside hits. I'm sorry, Palm Bay fans, but that is not called for. That's disappointing. And I see Mitch Brown, the defense corner of Palm Bay, giving it to one of the kids. Yeah, I, you know, the coaching staff's going to have a lot to say to their players about this one. And I tell you what, you know, and I see a – yeah, I, I – I, there's a flag there. Well, actually, he's giving it back. That's just unnecessary. You can, you can hurt a player badly doing that. I mean, Alan, you got, you got a, a, a six-foot-four – 280-pound lineman in Cody Black, who's not going to catch your running back. He's no. Just not. You don't have to touch him. Yeah, and, and Coach Panucci is upset. Yeah, if, if I told uh, or Alan, there's one thing that Jeff don't like, and, and it's things like that, and I don't know why this is going on Melbourne. Uh, I don't know why Melbourne just got marked off for an extra 15 and should be going the other way. Um, like this. I So they got zero blindside blocks, Allen, and gave Melbourne a personal foul. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. We saw three blindside blocks on that return. Now, if I go back and look at the film, and they're not blindside blocks, I'll apologize. But I'm here to tell you right now, I saw. I can say the all, one in the middle field was the one in the middle of the field definitely was the one on the far sideline was. And I know Jake Owens will have a lot to say to his team about it, too. 127 to go. I wouldn't turn the camera off for the handshake if I was. No, there. I'm not going to turn it off. <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> and, uh. So, what does it mean as a Palm Bay alum to get the third straight win over the program? Or Melbourne alum. Melbourne alum, I'm sorry, sorry. I mean, obviously sorry. that's, the, you know, the Battle of Babcock is something that you look forward to as a Melbourne Bulldog and a Palm Bay Pirate every year. These are bragging rights. These are kids that you've played youth football with, youth football against. They know each other since they were four, five, six, seven years old. And yeah, guess what? You, you get the next 365 to say whatever you need to say because you, you pulled out a victory. Yep. Now, listen, this is a very young and a very talented Palm Bay football team. They need to get, you know, they, they got to get some discipline in their game. They got to stop turning the football over. This is a team that will, Billy, I mean, they're going to be tough to beat. In the, they're going to be tough to beat the rest of the season. And I got news for you. I can't imagine in a couple of weeks, if they don't get this together, what's going to happen with Coco? I can tell you right now. They, they're going to have penalties like that against Coco. I don't know where the game's at, whether it's at Palm Bay or Coco. It's uh, at Palm Bay. Um, 
There's another delay game. Yeah. yeah I mean, they got to have 200 let's go. yards of penalties. Yeah, let's – look, you got, what, 67 seconds left. Let, let's go home. Let's, let's just get back yeah. on the bus. Let's just get it done. Let's get out of here and let's – I think you. I think as a coaching staff, you have got to address. And how about it? Really sweet on a sack. But you got to be careful here. You got to be careful I, here. I agree. You're, 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 these, these players are getting amped up at each other. Yeah. And and you know, again, these are guys that have known each other and, since they were little. And sweet, I get it. He can't do that either. He can't come dancing. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a game. That's going to get called taunting, Billy. 32 seconds to go in this one. Final thoughts, Mark. Fantastic win for Melbourne and their home crowd. Especially bounce back after losing to Coco. This was a big statement win. Rivalry win. And here's the thing. They scored zero points on your, on your home field here. Big win for Melbourne. Billy? I'll feed off just like that. Uh, a, a, a very, very big win here for Melbourne. We're going to have to have another snap with seven seconds left. Uh, momentum going into the rest of the season for Melbourne. Again, this is a 4 and one Palm Bay team. Now we got flags all over the field. Yeah. Because, again, we got kids and players that can't, you know, this is very unfortunate because it's not something you want to see. Uh-uh. Um, but, hey, this is the third straight victory, first time ever in program history for Mel High. Um Hey, uh, I guess if you're Palm Bay, it's still 37-7 and seven all time. Yep, and uh, I mean, I guess you could point to the final scoreboard, but over the last three years, uh, it's been all Melbourne, a one-point win last year, but 51-6 and 24 nothing, 75-6 in two of these three games. Um, and I know uh, Palm Bay's got a lot to clean up with this young and talented team in terms of discipline and in terms of turnovers. That's my final thought on this. For Melbourne, moving forward, a lot of positives you can take from this. You took advantage of all the situations you were given tonight. You put 24 points on the board. I still see some inconsistencies in the offense. They're going to have to be adjusted. But you know what? You've got four weeks left to get that done. And, and Alan, I, you know, I know guys hate to show conceit, but that's exactly what I would have been doing if I was Palm Bay. I would have just ran the ball and got out of here and, and, and been done with it. And we'll leave it on for the handshake. And I want to thank Mark Moses and Billy Palmer. Your final score, the Melbourne Bulldogs 24 and the Palm Bay Pirates nothing. I'm heading down to the field. All right. Have a great night. And uh, we'll see you at Slow and Low. See you, Coach. Billy, thanks, man.